Hi, it's Dan Harmon. If you're like me, you're a big fan of Harmontown, the podcast, uh, and you wish that you didn't have to wait uh, so long for it to drop after we record it. But here's the thing. Jeff Spencer, take it. You do not have to wait. You can, you can not only hear it right after it happens, you can watch it, too, in delicious, deluxe, high-definition multicam on your browser or your mobile phone. We do edit some stuff out sometimes. Like, I'll say something so incredibly racist uh, that we will catch it right before it drops as a podcast. Uh, but or, you get to watch Dan right before the sedition hearing when he talks shit about Trump again. Right. Uh, sometimes and, we have really famous guests, but we just cut it out of the podcast entirely. Because it turns out they're pedophiles. Sometimes Spencer's never wearing a shirt <laughs> most of the time we put that in in post not to mention all the times you always hear people laughing at something that doesn't sound funny because someone is making a funny face or wearing a funny shirt yeah for five bucks you get to watch all that stuff we, you, you can see the weirdos sitting down like getting nervous on camera there's, they go, there's like one camera that's just right up someone's nose and they're always picking their nose and stuff like that that's good as if that wasn't enough here's some political incentive um we will match your new subscription to the harmontown live feed uh up until april 15th the day of the big tax march, um, we'll match it with a donation to the ACLU. Which stands for a clue, which is what you should get. And I know, I know, you're, I know that's triggering your thought of going, doesn't the ACLU now have $800 million? Because, uh, uh, but here's the thing. ACLU money is like toilet paper money. Uh, it never expires. But if political encouragement weren't enough, some apolitical encouragement is if you sign up, you get access to a year and a half of our back catalog of video episodes, including the tour in Australia and Harmon Country, as well as audio downloads on the night of the record, on just minutes after it airs. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times have you been listening to Harmon Town for free after Wednesday and thought, I would really want to know what that guy looks like or what she looks like? Or I want to see exactly how uncomfortable the audience is when Adam Goldberg is on stage. Mm -hmm. Now, for $5 a month, you get to see it as well as hear it. You can almost taste the Harmontown. Go to harmontown.com slash live for your subscription to watch us as well as hear us. It really, really is a taste treat. <laughs> <laughs> Dan gave me little 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 eyebrows. I like I, I was like, holy shit, that guy just hit the bullseye. <laughs> I think it's a taste treat. Hey guys, Sklar Brothers here with Dan Van Kirk, and Hi, we've everybody. got Matt Walsh from Veep. He's from Veep. A, he is on Dumb People Town this week, and the riffing is fantastic. Uh, tune in, check it out, enjoy it. If you've ever asked yourself, how much Taco Bell can I get for a blowjob? We answer that question. Or how much a blowjob will get you in Taco, Taco Bell. Bell oh, that's in Taco Bell, better. that's the yeah. answer. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. well you gotta have to, you're going to have to tune in to find out Yeah. on this week's Dump Surprising people. answer, too, by the way. Very yes. surprising. Very surprising. Also, Christiana Amanpour. Kidding. She's not on the show. Feral Audio. Welcome to Hollywood, California, everybody. Harmontown is now in session. <laughs> The Meltdown Show is gone, but Harmontown persists. Let's bring out Spencer Crittenden, everybody! And the mayor of Harmontown, Dan Harmon! Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Okay, you know, there's warm up and then there's show stealing. <laughs> you, know, you might want to just cool it down a little bit. What are you afraid of, Dan? The, uh, are you afraid that I will uh, I will overshadow you with my pre-show antics? Yeah, because they, they involve like exercise and stuff. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? It's like, That's why I do it pre-show so you don't have to get you know in a lather. I well, yeah, but then it's like it's like Job of the Hut following Luke Skywalker. <laughs> Uh, Did you see me chop that cigarette in half with a whip? Yeah, I don't, you, you used the force. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> like you, yeah, should, but, you should have your own trilogy of movies, and I should just be a big fat thing at the beginning yeah, of the you, worst you, one. You, <laughs> I go, we get it. Are you gonna Are you gonna freeze me in carbonite? 
Just, just to be a dick? Uh, and to create an, uh, uh, 40 years of, of, of awkward uh, uh, soaps and chocolates. Uh. <laughs> Wait, there's Han Solo frozen chocolates? Oh, like, yeah, man. Oh, I, mean, man. I shouldn't say awkward because I love them. Like, I, 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 have, I, have, I have carbonite Han Solo uh, ice, ice trays. <laughs> For like real? These, like little rubber things you can put. You can have Han Solo oh, frozen that's, that's and amazing. carbonite ice in your drink. I don't really use They melt so fast because... His little fingers and you know you know what it's not it's not ideal but uh, yeah and there's like soaps and chocolates and stuff yeah, yeah, you know, so, yeah soap's yeah. the way to go because you can just leave it out in ornamental Han Solo soap. All right, so Han Han Sopo. Do you guys know who? You guys heard the name Katie May, the 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 the, the unfortunate um, was she a model act actor and she and they just found out that she 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 died mysteriously but they they traced it to. She she went to the chiropractor. It, this is just my fucking. I just not to make her tragedy about me, but I, I was like, like like I. But, but totally if you did, it would go a little something. Like, <laughs> she went to the chiropractor, and he just like like adjusted her to the point where then she went home and just without realizing it, kind of slowly died. I, I, I oh, like like no. like like it pinched something that oh, she no. must have just. And it was like it was like 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 this is it sounds like an urban legend, but she just like went home and was like just laying there and must have been. I mean, we don't know what happened in her final. Hours, but the, the the cause of death was. Oh, I, I, what, I'm never going to the chiropractor again. Well, also, like, my my girlfriend has like 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 stiff neck issues, and like she always asked me to crack her back. Am I going to kill her one day by doing? Yeah, I mean, I'm so, I, I, okay. <laughs> so just another thing to worry about. Just keep playing video games, and just just like it's let, the let, only let, way to. Let's convince her that it's really dangerous, so I never have to do it again. S speaking of safety. Now, th and this is the reason why, in the months ahead, I'm, I'm struggling very hard to create a Graham Norton feedback loop. I want the show to evolve to the point where you people, what do you mean, you people? Uh, you white people can can is what I usually mean. Can see uh, can see what the people on the stream are seeing, so that you, you know. Like, like, I'm not saying the goal is to become a real TV show, for God's sake. I mean, no, that, that'd be terrible. But uh, uh, I'm just saying, like, 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 you'll you'll have a lot more fun because I can show you this Instagram of this lady. Maybe you've seen it. There's this beautiful woman, a beautiful specimen of humanity. Uh, I don't mean physically. I, 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 I'm not, well, now what am I doing? Saying that she's ugly. I, I... Not my first choice. <laughs> I'm saying I'm using beautiful in a spiritual uh, way. I'm saying like this is like amazing. Like it, there's an Instagram. Somebody took on a plane of a uh, woman. A Kelly Oxford re Instagrammed it. I don't know where the source is from, but it's this woman and she's sitting on an airplane and she's got the neck pillow, so her head's propped up. She's sound asleep and clipped to the neck pillow. It kind of looks like a neck brace. Like it's almost like she has whiplash. Like like it's like one of those pillows that just is just holding her head like perfectly still. <laughs> And and like clipped to the neck pillow is a laminated uh, card, like a pristine, mm -hmm. like 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 typographically graceful. <laughs> like like she, it's like the the leading is perfect. Like like the kerning everything, like, <laughs> and and it's laminated and it has a little clip on it. Like it clips right to her neck pillow, and I I want to make sure I get it right because she's a woman of exactitude who is. <laughs> Um, uh, fuck, 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 where is it, where is it? Oh, here it is. The, it says, please wake me for snacks and drinks. Thank you. <laughs> and she's just sound asleep. That's great. And, 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 like, and she, like, like, it, it's, it's, it was amazing to me because, like, what, I, the, the, the caption that sums up your visceral reaction immediately is like, you know, from the, yeah, there, there was like, some, some person responded immediately with like, this bitch is my hero. <laughs> <laughs> which kind of sums up the dichotomy because it's kind of like you get you you're, you're jolted by the by the by her uh, having demands and entitlement and all yeah, this but that, stuff, but she's managing all of it. But that, but that says that says so many things. She travels a lot. First off, it, she and, and also, she also likes to get her little Z's on the plane. She, yeah, but also she, don't call her late for dinner. <laughs> Yeah, I she mean it's kind of amazing because it's like you you're you're so used to the dichotomy I, being oh there's people who are zen who are in the moment and those are the good people and then there's the uptight schedule based people and those are the bad people, but no it's no, nothing's ever that simple. Right. Like, this is a person who clearly 
like like she plans her shit out she has foresight but she's also at the same time kind of a life master i mean like like she's she, yeah. like there's a lot of zen people who are so fucking irritated I, I fly a lot because they're just they just use zen as an excuse to be flaky and fuck up your day right like yeah. i bet she's a really considerate house guest i bet uh, there's probably a really good chance that she's not she would leave you a note and probably give you a nice little gift when she left your she place. Pr- yeah she probably does her own dishes and all that shit like 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 I, she just it's just something about that cuz it it's not like a shitty like like marker thing and also she's like again please comma wake me for snacks ampersand drinks she used an ampersand <laughs> exclamation point thank you exclamation point i like that you started off by saying letting and kerning by the way that's that shows off your but it's just like she she uses it it's not it's it's center justified uh <laughs> it's not it's not left justified but it's also not like shitty like fucking like like can block, i see her? like can I, can I see the photo uh i don't i don't know that i have it oh, okay, I, I, I don't have it offhand i just like yeah, i'll but, track it down. but like six months yeah, from now I'll, I'll go zap and it'll be on the thing and America will be like, "Yay!" And then she'll be like, "You owe me money." And then we'll, and then we'll, and then CBS will be like, "We'd like to buy you." And then we're like, "Yay!" And they're like, "But she can't say anything bad about Jim Belushi." What could you possibly say bad about Jim Belushi, except for the fact that he pissed in the olive jar at the craft service in front of his co-stars? <laughs> I I I, uh, I overheard a guy at dinner tonight who was. So- I don't know if I can do this justice, but it was like there was a couple over at the other dinner table that we were eavesdropping on, the, the, like like and and the guy was going like, he goes like, no, it's extreme Pilates. You know, I've been doing Wonder Bar, or she, or she goes like, no, you know, I've been doing like Wonder Bar for about three years, uh, uh, and and he goes like, well, yeah, but no, you what you've been doing is this other thing, and he was like correcting her, and he's like, honey, I I mean now no. I'm telling you what you were doing was sitting upright in bed doing these things. He's like explaining to her. And then he goes like, I mean, now it's hard. I'm telling you now they have one down the street. And I mean, now it's hardcore. Now it's a legitimate workout. I mean, before it was gay. <laughs> and, and, then, and, then, and there was like a pause. And, and, then, and then I heard him very quietly. I was like, nah, I shouldn't say gay. <laughs> And I was like, I was like, well, either you should, either you're fine, like, 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 either, like, I don't think anyone was gonna like come over to the table and go, excuse me, that's really offensive. You know what I mean? Because you sound super gay. Like, like, it's, and it made me think, like, our, 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 is that when, when, when gay uh, uh, people. <laughs> Go on, Dan. I, for, I, for, I forgot what they were. Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing great. You're doing great. Humans. Yes. Uh, when, 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 gay, when gay folk, uh, uh, I was trying. That, that pause was me trying to as a like. Do I want to get? Do I want to get specific with gay men or? Uh, but wait, wait, gay people, uh, do they? Do they? Do they in conversations with uh, loved ones and or each other? Uh, do they police each other on the use of gay to be a derogate, to, to be like kind of like using it, you know? I don't know. It, it brought to, and also like this guy, I, what I also took that to mean, I was like, oh, this guy, he's straight, but like, he, boy, is he, he's got a, he, he's, he's, he's worrying about something he does not have to worry about. Like, like, cause he's like, ostensibly the reason you're like backpedaling on that is like, oh, I shouldn't say gay. Like the unspoken part of that is, I shouldn't say that because someone might within, get the wrong idea. Someone walking around here might get offended. They might like, like, and it's like no one's gonna get offended. You're, you sound gayer than the Statue of Liberty. Okay, <laughs> like, 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 like everyone would just be like, you're one of the great, most famous but- gay icons. <laughs> Like 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 Nathan Lane could be walking his uh, se- seven chihuahuas by uh, uh, and 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 and, and hear, overhear you and he'd say way to take it back you know that's a, a, like he you have nothing to worry about sir uh, man eating eating uh, 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 the uh, arugula salad at Little Dom's did, did uh, you just did you just out the Statue of Liberty <laughs> come on she's look at her come on oh, she's always hanging out with the Staten Island ferry hello hello. Joke from 1983. She's French. She's carrying a book. Yeah. She's holding a torch. Uh, <laughs> for some fucking lady. Yeah, for some chick. Um, all right, so I think that's, that's enough. Um, uh, that's enough of my business. Uh, we have... We have, we have, we have <laughs> 
our, our guest tonight is a uh, another podcasting hero. Like I, I the reason I the reason I'm familiar with this this podcast, I, j- I just became familiar with it, I, is because my uh, girlfriend Cody, her mom, uh, Randy. Mama LaRusso from Karate Kid. <laughs> oh, it's, I just I, his girlfriend's mom is the mom from Karate Kid. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, I, I, that's, I, that's never gonna stop being the coolest fucking thing I've ever heard for, of. For, for, for she you also played Rizzo on Broadway and, yeah. and Greece. Yeah, she's a fucking. But mate. she'll always be Mama LaRusso to me. Um, but but she, like a lot of people actually, she was on Mad Men as the uh, uh, I can't remember the the character's name, but she was just whatever. It doesn't matter. It's not about her. <laughs> We have, you haven't even said hi to Spencer. You're going to bring in a guest and you haven't even addressed yeah. Spencer over Yeah, there. don't, don't, you know the tradition of addressing Spencer before you bring out the guest. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's bad luck. It's Spen- a severe. Spencer, how are you? Oh, I'm so good, you guys. <laughs> I know, he's just using this as a time to pour himself a drink. Oh, man. Wow. Nimble as a mountain goat. Oh. <laughs> it's in the way that she uses it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a real weapon. Yeah, those. Oh. What is that? What is happening? People are wielding things. It looks like a. What are we looking at precisely here? That is horrifying. Exactly. Is it Eli Roth is here tonight uh, with a prop from his uh, next movie. Uh, the, no, no, come on, let's not devolve. No, don't. Oh, no. What, what, what is this? This is just. Let's just keep it. That's your scepter. That's my, this is my scepter. <laughs> it's it's a made weird, out of meth. What, what is it made of? Like, 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 it looks like, like it's wax. Like, is this wax? Uh, it's a, Resin? It's an elm stick from Sedona uh, covered in wax from my Sedona. house. Would, <laughs> Would you like to come up here? Just just one second. I've got scepter questions. What in the Joshua tree is going down? (laughs) This is this is. The audience is in an uproar. Okay, can right we now. can we for the for the listener who's not w- reading, uh, not uh, live streaming this one? You're wearing uh, is, it, is that is that a, like a, a a bathrobe? What do you have on? I prefer to call it my prophetic mantle. Prophetic mantle. <laughs> That's what I prefer to call it from now on. I love that. And you have a you have a smart satchel with you, a kind yes. of a tote. Uh, a bit of a Masonic apron bag. <laughs> Okay. Uh, what, and which, you have Mork, Mork and Mindy headband on. Uh, that's right. It what? says, it says gay in the back. It says, <laughs> it says gay in the back, and but business, business in the front. front. <laughs> it's it's an election thing. I'm with her. Gay in the back, but uh, voting lever in the front. That's right. Uh, the, uh, what, what what what's your name? Uh, Joey. Joey. Yep. Uh, and you're from uh, you, Provo. Pro, uh, it, it, wait, is Provo, that, Utah. Provo, Utah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, are you? Uh, are you? You're just visiting California? Uh, yes. Uh, I have my brother and his partner, spouse, uh, and and yeah, we're visiting. Okay. Visiting. Well, you guys all came together. You're not visiting them. That's right. We're, from Utah. What do you? What are you doing? In Cal- what are you? What else are you doing? Uh, in Utah, I. Uh, promote myself as the reincarnation of Joseph Smith, hmm. <laughs> which, 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 which has a built-in audience there. Uh, and you just do what? What you wait? But that didn't answer my. So no. <laughs> is that what you're doing here? Are you kind of on a pilgrimage, a well, missionary, I, I, or a mission? A mission? Right. Well, so I was here on the 200th episode uh, recording of your podcast, and it was amazing. And Thank I don't know. You. Yeah, it was it was after the show, so I don't know if you remember, but I actually gave you a hat that my brother and his spouse and I actually stenciled the name 
Ernest Hemingway? That's right. I have that in my closet. Oh, yeah. And I regularly look at it yeah. and go, what the fuck is this? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I was just, I, Cody just, and I were just and, looking at that. She said, and she said, it's cool. She was, right. she was about to wear it and it was like, don't wear that. What no, is that? Right. No. <laughs> There's another hat for her. That's, yeah. She's, but I also gave one to Spencer and it said, oh, yeah. Waldo, Waldo Pierce. And then you got one that said Ezra Pound. Yes. Yes. So I just, you had been talking about. How did we all forget you? (laughs) (laughs) Most, only in Los Angeles. Specific person in the world. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta work harder than this, folks. Good luck. I'll do what I can. I mean, I've run into so many guys wearing day coats that pretend to be uh, Mormons. Uh, well, the truth is, he does kind of blend around here, and that's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's yeah, a bad I, thing for your publicist, good thing for society. Yeah, it it definitely stands out in Provo, not so much in L.A. Not so. What much. do you got? What do you got in your Masonic uh, satchel there? What do you have? Uh, well, this is a medic droid for my oh. nephew. Okay. Is is that what IG88? What is it? Uh, when you say medic droid, that's the only one I remember. I don't oh, remember. Man, that's F- some new crap. He's right? like a no face, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I want to see some shamanic shit oh. in there. I want to see, like, you have some sort of rune stones oh, or something. What? Uh, oh. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Put that away. Put that away. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we have, we have, we have, we also have a we have a we have our guest that I was I, who, who must have uh, the uh, the guest equivalent of blue balls right now. The, uh, um, uh, we we can we can we can, we can handle. I think jo- Joey can. You want to linger for a bit, Joey? Sure. Yeah. Just, I, li- I like your style. Yeah. Jo- Joey, you remind me of early Harmontown days when we would we kept just discovering. Like 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 Levi's and like right. and people like like, like we had we had B J Avril and so we we had these great yeah. cast of uh, grooviness. Well, I'm a I'm a Facebook friend of Ershine Jane. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I'm drinking out of her glass right now. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to be interviewing her on our own podcast, The Pulpit, in a few days when All she right. visits Hello? Utah. Uh-oh. All right. Happy now, when you say that you're that you are, you bill yourself as the reincarnation of Joseph Smith, is that for real? Like you actually go around like like. Spread, oh, that's spreading the good word of that's the That's very real. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, so and not to not to frustrate your extinguished guests any longer but <laughs> he is extinguished at this right. point. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but I do circulate the the uh, past lives of certain individuals. Uh, so you uh, three individuals were friends during the lifetime of Waldo Pierce, Ezra Pound, uh, Ernest Hemingway, and we're part of that lost generation that kind of, oh. you know, went to France and and uh, had some fun, and and you killed yourself. So, <laughs> spoiler, that was, that was <laughs> And you had wanted to know a lot about the simulation uh, during the 200th episode, so uh, that's why I went to kind of let you know how the data conservation works in this simulation where we just recycle your oh we're yeah. just using yeah that would make sense the, yeah. like in video games it's like oh that's that's clearly uh, yeah. that other character with a hat that's right <laughs> it's like yeah that yeah. makes sense of course all right well, Joey how, how many times have you been to Harmontown just tw- just twice now this is the second all right. this is the second. second first time was he 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 gave us Hats. Warnings we did not heed. Right. <laughs> he's, now he's back to wonder why. Uh, now he has a fantastical rainbow schlong yeah. stick, which is I'm really good. I'm pretty sure if you drop this, it turns That's into a, yeah. a snake. Right? Right. Uh, a waxy, a waxy, creepy snake. Uh, it's a, 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 just to be clear, you said because you, you started, you said this is a stick from An your home. Stick from Sedona. Oh, or no, not from your home. Sedoma. Uh, so, Sedona, Sedona, Arizona. Arizona. Don't forget Sedona. Land of sticks. Right. No, don't forget Winona. <laughs> and, and, and wax from your house. That's right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Wait. So yeah. you, you have your own wax supply at home? <laughs> I do. Okay. All right. Well, so anyways, so this amazing podcast that we started listening to to help put us to sleep, the, the conceit of the podcast is a sincere attempt to... 
uh, put you to sleep. It's for insomniacs, it claims on the surface. Uh, uh, but it's, it's endlessly entertaining as well. There's no wrong way to use it. He goes into all that stuff. It's very, it's very, very smart, amazing guy. Uh, please listen to his podcast, uh, Sleep With Me, uh, if you haven't already after this. But uh, let's get to know our new friend, Drew Ackerman. <laughs> Oh, well, that's, yeah, okay, that's nice. Thank you. All right. Good move. Hello, Drew. Drew, meet Joey. Hi. Hey, what's up? Right. Do, do you have any uh, past life info on me? I, I don't, I don't I got Do I want to know? Tarot cards. I'll work on that. Okay, oh, great. <laughs> Wait, I said you have shamanic shit. You, you're hiding tarot cards in your satchel? <laughs> you're, are you going to do a reading right now? Well, no, I'll just, I'll just be do doing... Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. Uh, We'll yeah, do, do a little background tarot on us, and whenever you feel like something uh, something uh, okay. significant pops up. That. That's right. And, uh, okay, all right, right there on the floor. Okay. All right, yeah. fine. <laughs> and and and, uh, and and in the book, will you let me know when uh, it, uh, you know? You wait. You already did let me know. Does that mean she's here? Yeah. She's oh, she's here. here. Okay. Well, she's in the schedule too. <laughs> Let's hear for Drew. Thanks for coming, Drew. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> would you would you mind terribly? Let's do this Halloween just, intervention right now. Doing the, the because she she I begged her to come down and she's she had food simmering on the stove. Um, I just want to bring her out to 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 go over a little a little kerfuffle we had in, in text. Uh, uh, you remember our friend, uh, my neighbor Beth Bootson. Bootson. This, this show is a. This show is is, is a cavalcade of stars. Yeah. <laughs> Lay that staff across there. All right, yeah. Beth. Thank you so much for coming down. I know it was like, like I, I, you know, you you sped out of your house. I invited you last minute because I thought, well, geez, we had this thing. It was a flare-up. It was a neighborly flare-up. Oh. <laughs> All right, and I'm, I'm scrolling back in our conversation. Okay, and it's easy because you marked it with that photo. All right, so Beth, as you know, she came on the show with her uh, son, son Timmer, yeah. uh, who was doing the uh, Haunted House, and then he, t Timmer, the son, came on again last week. With Spooky, say, spooky One Direction. Haunted yes, House he came is, with uh, his friends. Yes, yes. So the following day, Monday, 10, 11 a.m., uh, I get... So what do we want to do? Do we want to... Uh, do we, Last time, we did, I read your parts and you read my parts, but maybe... Why don't we just... You know what? I think it's actually, based on all your language, maybe it's better if you just read your own... I'll read my own... <laughs> all right. Beth, I can't see. Are you in a mic? Do you, you, you have a microphone? Oh, here, I'll do it right yeah, now. Yeah, right. eat that mic. Okay. Okay, so I'm in there uh, Monday. So this, so then this happened, and I'm just, you know, I don't okay. want to take up too much of Beth's time, but I also didn't want to, I don't want to talk about this, and like, I don't even know what happened. Well, uh, it's like, like, like. So I guess we just start. We yes, just, we can just start. You so just... the the last Sunday, my son and his friends came on, and his friends were wearing gas masks, and he came on to tell you about his haunted maze. So the next morning, I text Dan, and I said, Hi, Dan. Last night, we got a visit. We believe it was from one of your diehard fans. Whoever it was stole Timor's apocalyptic wasteland banner off of our garage door. No. And then she sends a picture oh. Of, oh, the, no. of, the, of the banner. Yeah, let, me see if I, let me see if I can show. Oh. Now, what evidence did you have, Beth, at this point? Ah, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah. yeah. So... We're I'll reading. handle this for a 45-minute fucking <laughs> okay. fight. Yes. Oh, because yes. I, have, so, I have minor justice issues. Dan has huge justice issues, so let's right. see what goes down there. <laughs> I right, have medium so. justice issues. <laughs> We're like the bears. Yes. yes. And so then, I wrote... Spencer, your justice issues are just right. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, and then, uh, so I wrote... I. Uh, uh, sent this to Dan, and then I said, the price of knowing Dan Harmon. And I put uh, a very surprised look of uh, those little, uh, what do you call them? Mochis. Like, a sticker? 
<laughs> and, and, and then I uh, wrote it again by accident, and I said, oops. Okay, so... And then I put, grrr. You say, this sounds like you had a little wine. <laughs> well, that, well, that <laughs> okay, these, so these, these are wine texts. All right. So then I said, why on earth would you assume an adult podcast listener would do something like that instead of a high school student? And then I wrote back... I said, why would a high school student even want it so bad that they would steal it? It has more value to the person who has something that's connected to you. A little piece of Dan Harmon. That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> they know my house is next door. If they wanted a piece of me, they could take something from me. My audience is nice people. Said, it makes for a great story. We will put everything away in our garage now. They wouldn't be going to your haunted house to do anything but support you. Some of your fans are nice, normal people. Some of them are obsessed with Dan Harmon people. That's true. Your fans are fascinated that we live next door to you. It's okay, I'm not mad at you. We'll just make a new one. How could we possibly know if it is a Dan Harmon fan? We just had a suspicion. The boys are already excited to make a new one, and they've got a great story. You may not be mad at me, but I can't think of a reason to share that suspicion with me other than to solicit feelings of guilt. <laughs> not to make you feel guilty. It's not your fault. It's more a story of interest. Don't you find it interesting? Like, would you want me to express shame or remorse about this thing just because you have a weird theory connecting it to me? <laughs> what if my dog got poisoned and I texted you saying I knew your friends did it? That would be really thoughtless of me because if I respected you as a human being, I'd have to know laying something like that near you would cause you anxiety. It's funny. We're rather humored about it, flattered in a way. Saying you're humored and flattered that one of my fans stole your stuff is still saying one of my fans stole your stuff. It's weird to say that. We don't know if it was one of your fans. You don't know either. So drunk. <laughs> Just, like you could smell the Chardonnay on these this, texts. This, this, this is 10 a.m. though. I mean, no judgment. But Notwithstanding. <laughs> We'll never really know. It's just a suspicion. We're not blaming you. It's just a possibility. We still love you, no matter what. Think how cool it would be to have the banner on one's wall and be able to say that it came from one of Dan Harmon's episodes. Maybe it was a prankster. Just was a coincidence. You don't have fans that are a little out there? <laughs> Well, I do have a crazy neighbor that accuses strangers of stealing shit, but I don't know if she's a fan or not. I didn't accuse you. I said strangers. I didn't accuse a stranger. I suspect it. Don't really know. Thought it was a possibility. Thought it was a coincidence. Thought it was interesting. It's a possibility that ISIS took it. You didn't text the president. <laughs> <laughs> and it wouldn't be coincidence if a random, unknown, unrelated person took something from a haunted house that was open to the public. It would be incidents. If I thought that someone would do that to you guys that respected my show, I'd be livid and embarrassed. I have a neighbor sharing information with a neighbor who just happened to have an episode on his podcast relating to a neighbor's haunted maze. The very same night the banner goes missing, it's just a coincidence? There's a cardboard sign on the street corner that says Haunted House. Has nobody been coming other than podcast people? Do they have <laughs> podcast logos on their foreheads? Is there a sign in sheet and all the people that came wrote Harmontown in the Who Sent You column? <laughs> you are livid. You take responsibility for all your fans? You know that none of them would ever do that? You know that none of them would even consider that? Do you consider them your children? Have I offended you because I said is a poss that it is a possibility that one of your fans may have taken it? Yes! <laughs> you have! It's an offensive thing to do. Look up the word offense. <laughs> I did not accuse you. This is not about you. Why are you taking this so personally? This has nothing to do with you. I'm not blaming you. Then why did you text me about it? Because, 
because I had suspicions that could possibly that it could possibly be one of your fans. So it has something to do with me. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so you expected me to laugh and say, "Ha ha, that's funny that someone in my podcast audience stole your property." You joked about two episodes ago that you were afraid that if you gave our address away, that everyone would know whereabouts you live and that you would come home to find a stranger in your kitchen. I would be upset for you if that happened. I wouldn't consider it a normal human response to be amused by Timber's property being stolen, even if it was by a complete random person. I would just say, oh, that's too bad. I wouldn't say, ha ha, that's funny. So imagine how much weirder it would be to say ha ha to someone stealing Timmer's stuff if it wasn't a complete random person, but was someone somehow doing it because of my show. The normal human response to the idea of that would be for me to say, oh God, that's fucking awful. I can't believe someone did that. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't expect you to laugh. I didn't expect you to get mad though. I was making a joke. You didn't find it funny? But it really was an attempt of light humor that was taken very seriously. Sorry. Thank you for being such a cool neighbor. <laughs> you take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll be in Scotland before you. People always want to hear about what it's like to live to Dan, uh, next to Dan Harmon. A peek into him. Well, your joke was that your son had to pay a price for living next door to me. And that would be something that I would feel terrible about. And you kind of committed to the joke to the point of arguing for a really long time that we should definitely assume someone that listens to the show did it. It wasn't very clear and still isn't. Which part is the joke? Do you still honestly believe it's more likely that someone from my audience did it and the joke was that it mattered at all? Or was the joke that you suspected it was someone from the audience and you just have a very strong commitment to humor? <laughs> Dan, can we uh, take that one again, but faster this time? <laughs> oh, Dan, it was a stupid joke. I'm not that mad. <laughs> Sent with balloons. But I have to fixate on my writing now. I'm way past a morning deadline and getting yelled at. Please forgive me. I forgive you, nutty pants. <laughs> no harm intended. Hashtag neighbors for life. <laughs> That's a, that's a good ending. Right? Yeah. I, I like the new hashtag, harm intended. <laughs> and, then I sent, and then I sent him an emoji that uh, is the emoji where the guy's eyes are Googling like this and there's the crazy guy. No, I'm not saying that you're nuts. I said, well, maybe just a little. All right. Well, I guess. It's, it's, uh, but, all right. So, is there? Uh, you you have the pulpit. Uh, do you want? Do you still think that? Um, what am I? That we can still be friends. Well, do you still think one of my fans <laughs> took your tarp? I took. I took the fucking tarp. <laughs> it's in my car. I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, Who I'm a afraid tarp? to say, I mean, I, Dan. I, I used to steal anything that wasn't nailed down. I, I, maybe I... I but well, it's, it's got to be a teenager unrelated to the show. It's, this, it's just... this had black gorilla tape uh, that it was uh, taped all to the garage. Right. And it was very, very... Um, it looked like um, a little kid that had taped it to the garage. And uh, it was big and... It was, it just, I just think it's kind of a really, really weird coincidence that, oh, hold oh, on, no. that the night that, oh, wait, wait, don't, don't get mad all I'm over again. To get mad. Let me ask you guys, because you're his fans, is it a strong coincidence that, that it could be, I'm not saying it's you. I'm not saying it's you. I'm, I'm sure most of you are very normal, nice people. I'm sure some of you are nice is people, but a lot of you are bringing crime. Yes. A lot of you are rapists. a possibility. Yeah. I'm sure some of you are nice. Some of you are stealing signs. Is it a it's possibility true. that one of you could have driven to our house because we live next door to Dan Harmon. I think it's as likely that you stole this sign yourself so you could get back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, there's, you 
in a Jerry. world where anything's possible, there's no need to focus in on the possibility. I just that, think it's that, very, very coincidental that the next morning that, you know, we had that episode the net night before. But but nobody so would have stolen. So was this Monday night that this happened? It happened it Monday, Monday morning. It was Monday Sunday, when we Sunday. when we went outside Monday morning. Okay. Monday morning. So it would have to be. So they would have had a, to be here a, in the in or the a room. live streaming person that 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 was nearby. That yeah. somebody you know whatever it was somebody you know mm-hmm. somebody one of you <laughs> one of you yeah sure God. Just so All we're right. Clear. Well, we'll continue to. I mean, I've, I come like, forward now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all, we'll lower the lights and turn our backs. And if you took the uh, apocalypse sign, uh, put it put it down. Yeah. Give them a chance to turn themselves in. The yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, if you, yeah. If someone 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 return, you can you can you can just bring it to nerd mount. Right. Yeah. Bring it here and drop. Yeah. It off. Here's a way to do it. Um, if you return the sign and you were a Harmontown fan, meaning you're listening to this right now, and you did take it, which, which it. is really cool if you did. Yeah. <laughs> That's like really like, awesome. It's a very, very cool banner to hang on a then wall. Beth, Beth Boots that and somebody Beth, could say. Beth, would you put a $100 bounty on that if, if, if somebody could prove that they were a Harmontown fan? Would you pay $100 to get that sign back? That, would what? I pay $100? Yes. yes, to prove yourself right. You know what? I think Dan Harmon... Whoa! Oh! Would pay $100. Dan, no, no, no. But then if you took it, you can just make a no, hundred bucks. No, I didn't take it. Well, I didn't take it either. But Dan but... Harmon, I okay. think... You, you, you both have to, you have to match Dan's 100 You both have to put $100. 200 clams if you're a Harmonian that stole that sign. Wait, 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 wait. You, Beth, are... Wait. You're no, putting no, up 100 but bucks. but I would be right. So right, you'd be right. I yeah. would be right, but it would cost you a hundred simoleons. No, you would be wrong. Right, I'd be wrong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the the penalty for being wrong is that you have to pay a hundred dollars. Right. So what, what we're saying is. Well, let me wait, 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 wait. Let me up the ante. Okay. Let me oh, up shit. the ante. <laughs> Physical challenge. If we were to get that <laughs> it's gonna get the banner back, mm-hmm. you have to pay the hundred dollars and then autograph it for the person. And then it would be worth even more. She when stole, they hang it on their Beth, wall. Beth, you stole the banner. You just want, <laughs> This is the fucking yeah, longest sure con start, I've ever are seen. Are you sick of the haunted house? This is like the sting. Is, are you acting out against the haunted house? No, I'm. Robert I'm, Redford's about to no, come out. I think this is a funny story, and wouldn't it be interesting to find out who's right? Right, but we won't be able to. What we only thing we really can do is say, if somebody gives it back anonymously, we can. We'll we'll still won't be able to reach the conclusion, you know, automatically that a Harmontown fan took it. However. That person has the po- whoever took it has the power to make it look that way, and we're opening ourselves up and saying, even look like fine if that person does that, would you be willing to pay any money for that? Well, no, for no, that? no, 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 no. Let's look at if if it gets returned, I think Dan Harmon should autograph it, and we can hang it here on the wall. Oh boy. And right. Can I make I a pitch? No, it's, it's, it's worth- may, may, I, may I make a pitch? Um, I think anyone listening to this right now should go to that haunted maze, steal anything you want. <laughs> Dan Harmon will autograph it for you. Well, I'll make you this deal now. Let's just go rob this fucking starting, place. Starting with free Harmon autograph. This show, anything that gets stolen is kind of this podcast's fault. <laughs> like, 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 because I'm saying Harmonians don't have funny. the guts to go steal shit. <laughs> From the Boots and family. <laughs> uh, We're putting everything in our garage now. But I, uh, well, okay. But but anyways, all right. Well, so like, like you, you just wait. Is it possible if you think of a scenario in which there's someone who is so driven by his obsession with Dan that he wants to steal or she? Why, why do you think that person would go to you and not go to Dan's house and steal for something from Dan's because house? Because it was a, it was the night of our episode. But that that's and that's backwards. And the way like, they look at it, backwards. it's a really really cool banner. They could hang it on their wall. That's like and. A, 
That applies to anybody. No, it applies to only Dan Harmon fans. One of them. One of them. Uh-huh. Who would be cool to like, wouldn't this be cool? Because I took it and it was related to Dan Harmon because it was about the episode about Harmon right. Mazes. Well, I feel like in this Gamera versus Mothra conflict that we have, <laughs> like, like you, you with the eucalyptus tree thing, it was like, okay, I'm the bad person. I feel, Your I'm tree's confident. fine, by the You're way. You're the bad person in this case. <laughs> it survived those winds? Oh, yeah, but you don't know. You could, you could uh, be a diseased all... eucalyptus tree and survive a million <laughs> winds. Nah, that those, are, those trees are gone. Yeah. I, well, anyways, but I do want to acknowledge, like, I texted you and said, will you come down and read this shit? And that's like, you had soup on the stove and you were in your pajamas and you came down here. I'm still split. wearing my pajama top. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, thank you so much. And we're gonna, uh, uh, let's hear it for Beth Bootson. And, uh, Beth Bootson. Well, don't forget to stop by the Haunted Maze. Just and take every goddamn thing you can get your hands on. And if you I don't want to see a back, thing standing there. And if you bring back that that uh, tarp, tarp, yeah, yeah, the banner, uh, Dan Harmon said he would sign it. <laughs> sure. And sure. give you a hundred dollars. So. <laughs> okay. All right. And if you right. don't bring it back, Jeff will give you a hundred dollars. <laughs> yes. But I'm gonna sign Beth Bootson. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Beth, Beth, Beth. In. And the unsung hero of the of the Beth Boots and Chronicles, her husband Dan, who I think drove her drove her down here last minute, probably <laughs> back there too. We have we've never even really met him. Thank you, Dan. Uh, he, he, he was out. He was out here once. And he, but he never spoke. He just sat there uh, in, in blissful silence. The long suffering Boots and husband. <laughs> they call him on the block behind Beth's back. That's what we all call him. Oh, the long-suffering boots and husband. Again, let's uh, let's say goodbye to Drew Ackerman. Thanks for coming up, Drew. <laughs> Thank you. To see you. All right, all right, Drew. <laughs> Jesus, this poor guy. I, I am so sorry. I, I uh, that was awesome. Okay, uh, had to had to. It was a timely thing. I it wasn't though. I'm a bad podcaster. You're but just you're being respectful one. of her time. So your uh, uh, your your podcast conceit. Which is sincere, which I, uh, but I have to say, like, also doubles as like genius comedy. I mean, it, it like, like something about you that kind of, in a sublime way, rises above the dichotomy of is he doing a bit or is he for real? You're you're kind of both. You know how funny it is that you're for real about the fact that your dulcet tones, your way of speaking, um, <laughs> you have resigned yourself instead of instead of. In a, in a world where everyone's trying to, to uh, deli- you know, uh, distinguish themselves and entertain, you were like, you know what? Come to me when you want to go to sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I, I mean, like, I think it's, even as a person that makes it, like, I look at it like, oh, I'm putting all this work into something that no one listens, and, and I'm like a really anxious, obsessive person, so I'm constantly worrying about it. Like, oh, this isn't good enough. Blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, holy shit, like, if someone, like an outsider was watching this, they'd be like, dude, you're insane. Like, and some listeners even email me, like, why don't you just read from the phone book? Why do you spend so much time working on it? Like, and I'm like, well, I'm convinced that's what puts you to sleep. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. It, well, that's, a, yeah, and that's, that's, but, uh, I, there was an article in The New Yorker about you, about your podcast that, that, that talked about that, that insomnia is not something that people have conquered. It's a lot like the common cold. It's, it, it is, it is, you know, people think it's so simple, but it, it persists because doctors can't really get around it because anything a doctor would prescribe to you, it, it <laughs> becomes part of this labyrinth of anxiety that keeps people awake. Uh, you, you yourself suffer from insomnia, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean the podcast, it was funny cause last Sunday you were kind of talking about Sunday nights and you were having a shitty night and you're like, Oh, like, and for me, that's where the podcast came out of was like, I had the terrible time at school and I would like when Sundays were coming, I would not be able to sleep and I'd be like all worried. And I was like, oh, I told my parents and they're like, drink some milk or like, whatever, you know, whatever. Like, and I'm like, no, you don't understand that. Like spend the whole night worrying and move. And they're like, oh, all that. And, and then I started listening to Dr. Demento, like, <laughs> to, like, like weird Al and stuff. And it didn't never put me to sleep, but it like took my mind off of like lying there and worrying and thinking about going to school the next day and, and getting in trouble and stuff. And. And yeah, I don't, I don't think like like pills can work for some people. Like, there's different things that work for different people. But I think like 
a lot of people want a bedtime story. And yeah. It's gonna be boring. Now, what do you do exactly? What What makes you think that you're so narcotic that you can put people to sleep by talking? Like, what is What is it about you that? I, I also, is it? Well, I can, is, is it verifiable that you that people have said thank you? You, you knock me right out. Yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. And, and your sponsors are mattresses and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like he, and he has, he has. You, I think you have about as many listeners, or maybe more than us. I mean, he's 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 very humble and self-effacing. New Yorker but, never wrote shit about Harmontown. Uh, <laughs> but the, the New Yorker, the New Yorker piece on you, which was June 2016, but they they, they, they I, I copied and pasted this. Uh, it said the ideal bedtime story according to. Natoon Verma, a national spokesperson for the American Academy of Sleep Medicine. So the ideal bedtime story is one that doesn't build upon itself, like a movie with a lot of parallel stories that don't connect at the end, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. Like, like our, our, the, the children's books that our parents would, would sit with us, they, they, they do have a kind of like meandering quality. They don't exactly like... They're not diehard. They don't like. Yeah, yeah. So like, the, like the longer you're listening, the bigger the build is. Oh my God, Hans Gruber's gonna get it. <laughs> it's like, oh, right. and then this, and then the. My then, mother would always read Beowulf to me, right before. I <laughs> But you, when, when you first started doing the podcast, how many episodes have you done? Because you do about three a week. Yeah, like I've done like four hundred and fifty, like more than four hundred and fifty. How long have you been at it since like what three year? Three years. So, so he's been doing it as less time than we've been doing this podcast, and has twice. Well, this of course the math would work out, Dan. He, d yeah. <laughs> If yeah, you man. stacked his podcasts on top of ours, there'd be three times as many. Because he does them three times a week. If the moon was one from the earth, he'd have hit it three times. Um, thanks, Dan. Uh, the, uh, the, but but you, did you originally start doing it? I didn't like go back to the beginning. Did you start trying to just straight up tell bedtime stories? I, I like was like curious. Like I was like, man, like... I don't know. I like listening to podcasts and comedy podcasts and stuff. And I was like, man, why? And this isn't like a knock on like guided meditations or nature sounds, but I, it was always like something that like ir I, I'm an irritable person. So it would irritate me or the nature noises would get. I'd be like, wow. And I, I was like, why isn't there something that's a little bit weird, but that has a bedtime story? There's also like, it was like a factor because you're such a smart, funny guy. The thing is, like, I'm sure. Uh, uh, like nature, those tapes, like the people that tend to delve into that area, they don't have, like, God bless them, but they don't, they don't, they're not, like, there's funny things that can happen that they don't acknowledge. Like, yeah, they're not lying there, like, thinking about, like, what are the bugs crawling around? Like, where the hell is this rain? Like, like Shrab, my partner Shrab, a partner, friend, but he's a friend now at this point. It's more of a, he's a kind of a common A life husband. partner. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, the, he 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 tried to do like he had a therapist that would give make his own tape. He would give him tapes and sell them to him. Um, uh, this just happens at this point in the show. Don't worry about it. Um, but, but one of the things I remember Schraub describing to me. Oh yeah, I'm listening to this tape and this guy's like talking to me about. You know, you're gonna be uh, less intimidated uh, in public. You're gonna he's giving issuing these commands, but then like. Clearly, like a screen door opens and some woman comes home with groceries, and like, like there's like, like there's these random sounds that happen. Uh, people, people that put themselves in charge of of your spirit and your essence. Like the danger there is that the drawstring is is pulled so drawstring, the bowstring is drawn so so tight that the slightest bit of humanity, like like shoots an arrow across the room is very distracting you're from the outset you the first episode that i listened to you do you just had decided that you wanted to talk about well you didn't decide you got you talked about crackers for 30 minutes <laughs> 30 30 hardcore like 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 crack like like just your the labyrinth of your mind See, I, I don't think, i don't think i would fall asleep to that i think i'd want to know no it's a lot to think about like you got like, isn't there a cracker industry? I mean, that's what I was thinking about. Like, you got the green box crackers. You got the red box crackers. Like, what, what other ones are there? Uh, you, you have a whole national Blue biscuit company. Crackers. You got the Nabisco? Yeah. Yeah. But what, and, you got no, all the Trump's right. followers? I, I was, 
it, it brought me to the edge of my consciousness listening to the cracker thing. And then what you really got into was that you were you'd become obsessed with Rick Moranis, and you you wanted to talk. And I, I would I would drift in and out of consciousness. And when I would drift drift back into consciousness, you were still in what apparently was a was I guess a a a, a fantasy improv that was a conversation between you and Rick Moranis. <laughs> Just for what seem seemingly it seems like it's six hours. Like 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 the the podcasts are about two hours long, but it seems like and that's the beautiful thing is like we use ocean waves and howler monkeys and things. That now, Drew, uh, for somebody who I, I don't suffer from insomnia, I, I sleep pretty well. Uh, is this something that would put anyone to sleep, or is it is, is it a certain mindset that goes into this singing? Like I need this particularly to knock me out. Like you would know pretty quick. Like the people that it won't put to sleep hate me. Like <laughs> and they, they like email me. They're like, oh, I fucking hate your voice. Ah, oh, like so it's like pretty like because it is like Dan was saying. Like some people, certain things work for. They like want to be led on this journey to find the magical box within their soul or whatever. But that's just not me. Like I want something that's goofy. Do you ever and slip in any weird subliminal stuff? Like, just like <laughs> I've tried, like I, I I tried a few times, yeah. Like, and no, one, like the, the sad thing was, no one emailed me. Like, I was like, okay, my little ninjas. Like, I was pretending I was giving like a, a seminar on profiting from boredom or something, and, and then I was like, okay, now you're going to kill it. You know, I didn't, put, I didn't say kill right. though. Like, how did you how did you describe yourself when you were in the, the 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 episode you just did that people if people listen right now to the latest episode you talk about you're nervous coming on the podcast and you try to do my story circle model with the thing it makes me feel like I ruined your podcast because you're no, no. you're talking about my bullshit uh, uh, all night and it's like 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 I, I but that was it was also brilliant I mean you were you I'm you, sure lots of people fell asleep to that day yeah I, I no I don't flatter myself that way but the, um the you taught in that episode you said uh you just you, sometimes you you're explaining you each week each each podcast episode you're explaining to people who might be new you're going like uh you know you're telling them how to categorize you and this episode you said something like I'm just that friend of yours that uh you know you think uh yeah you, you know it's yeah, I'm, I'm your friend that you're allowed to think is a is a is a doofus. What did you say? <laughs> like a, something like that. Like like I mean, that's like kind of the conceit of the podcast. Is like, I mean, via podcast, like I'm coming over to your house, but you have no commitment to like listen to me or humor <laughs> me or offer me a drink. I mean, like like almost like a super stone person that doesn't that won't stop talking, but instead of like getting on your nerves, you're like. Oh, I'm just gonna lie here and fall asleep, and they're right. like, "Totally, I don't care at all." Like, That's a <laughs> like, Let me tell you about the time I showed up at Rick Moranis's house and tried to pitch him to get back. You know, yeah. I, I might have mentioned this a long time ago, a long time ago in Harmon Town, but I was on a, in a on a flight, and Alec Baldwin. This is a long time ago, like pre Thirty Rock, uh, was sitting across the aisle from me, and he was sitting next to a woman who I don't think he knew, and I had the Bose like noise canceling headset on. So I could just barely hear him. And it was the greatest thing to fall asleep. He was like, you know, when I was six, I had this dog. <laughs> this dog ran away. And he told the story about this dog that ran away. I was like, I, I just drifted beautifully off the sleep. Like, I want Alec Baldwin just to come over and just lay next to me and whisper. Yeah, like I'm like kind of like the, uh, the, the boring, crappy version of Alec Baldwin. <laughs> well, that's but but interesting... like also weirder. And more, like, I, like I try to stay calm. I think that's another thing about the podcast is like I tend to be really anxious and spastic but like to do the show i've got to be like i got to calm down and be like uh well one i can't believe mrs larusso listens right. to my freaking podcast <laughs> so but, but the, like even this would be like okay there was just a woman on stage and she was she, she it's clear to me she's so sick of her son's haunted house that she's trying to set up dan and i was pitching her one night and she came out of the house she checked him at timor's door to see if timor was asleep and, you know, I wonder, when you think about timor you're like what does he have on his walls like how many what posters does he have and uh like and then i think about myself and i'm like man like i wish i like I, di I didn't have that. I could have never made a haunted house. Like, I, I think I started making it. So that's kind of the podcast. <laughs> so it's all... It's all free association. Do you, do you prepare anything? Or you just, just to totally riff and just, just go with the flow? So I do one free association one every week. Then I do one like that it's, that's like soft scripted, like outlined with dialogue. 
And then I do one on like TV shows. So right now I've been watching like there's a Colombian version of Breaking Bad. It's called Metastasis. And it's like, it's awesome. It's like a shot for shot remake. Well, almost shot for shot. So, and this is how ill I am. It's called Metastasis. It's like tumors. Cool. Yeah, because cause Walter White. For, for I never saw it, sorry. <laughs> One day. They, that they, would be they, they have to focus more on the cancer than the drugs in, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. in this version because yeah. it's not, some things are more shocking than others. I, but yeah, like so, I'll watch. I'll watch the Colombian version of Breaking Bad. Then I'll watch Breaking Bad. I'll take a ton of notes, and then I'll just be like, uh, "Walter, it's Walter Blanco." So I'll be like, uh, "Walter Blanco." <laughs> Walter but they, Blanco. But they left. They left Walter. And Saul Bueno. It, yeah. Saul Bueno. Yeah. It is right. really good. Like the acting. It's not like a joke. Like. It, it it made me appreciate Breaking Bad so what much more. What is it more. that draws you to it? Because you, I think you you said uh, you're 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 actually kind of teaching yourself Spanish or brushing up well, on your Spanish yeah. with it. Or? I've learned about I've watched sixty one episodes. I probably yeah. le- like twice, and I probably like still know the same words when I failed out of Spanish yeah. in high school. But what is what is drawing you to that? Because when I hear about that, I think okay, I'd like to watch a five minute clip of that. But but what do you, what do you what, so you're really you're hooked on a thing that you already know the story and you're. Well, he watching. said he's a bit obsessive about your your. Yeah, I think it's like well, one, it, it's like from making anything every single week. It's like I gotta watch it every week. So like people are like, oh, why don't you do something like the Smurfs or something? And I'm like, well, I'd lose my mind. Like I could watch two weeks of the Smurfs, but. Breaking Bad is a great show, and then mm-hmm. it's just interesting watching like a kind of Colombian interpretation. All right, so it's always it's always giving you something to, to the, the, because it's lateral. I think I think I get that now. So it's a, it, it correct me if I'm wrong. This is maybe something that you wouldn't do at all if you didn't have this podcast to contend with. Exactly, you, you're, like, you're actually using it to like kind of charge a battery. Yeah, because like you know when you like you're watching something and then you like kind of like start playing around on your phone or whatever like this is like i have to be engaged Mm -hmm. and i don't know i guess like because it's like pointlessly challenging i don't know but what about that drives me but it's like like almost like i was like i'm not gonna watch 62 i'm gonna watch 62 episodes of this colombian breaking bad but then it's like i have to find material in it so it's like i'm mining and i'm watching their shirts and stuff and i'm like oh that's boring i could talk about a shirt for eight minutes like no problem (laughs) So, so we've got a mind capable of that, and we've got somebody who also, in the episode, not to spoil it, but you almost inexplicably focus in, you trying to decode my uh, story model, uh, you, f- you choose to use this amazing song from A Chorus Line, the musical. Uh, why is that your favorite song? Why and why are Which you... Which song? Uh, I feel nothing. Nothing, yeah. Oh, yeah. L- like, just because... Or just Every nothing. Every day, I'm sorry, for a week, I would try. Yeah, it's a good song. Well, like it just like I think like it 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 goes back to like why why do certain people can't sleep like overthinking people or people that obsess about stuff and it's like that song does have some truth in it and then it has this like feeling for me it's like oh wait I'm dead inside right. like so so <laughs> like, like I'm like when I hear the song I think about that like and I like it better because I'm like okay she's singing about this surface thing. Mm-hmm. And then there's this whole other thing going on within the story of the song, and then there's like the truth behind it, like right, like like, like just whatever happened out here on the stage with the freaking haunted house. <laughs> it's like, yeah. like you could start to unpack that. It's like, and I mean the fact that you talked, you text with your neighbor, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, she, like, she texts with me, I, and, I, <laughs> you know, and I and I and I and I respond every time. I, I said no, don't 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 be sad. It's uh, she'll be fine. She'll be back next week. Uh, she, but 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 I'm so intrigued by that because I just you, Dan, you know, real quick, real quick. This might be uh, might be pricky of me to say this. Did, did she, did you, how much zero to one hundred percent? Do you think that she st- engaged you in that text conversation because she thought it might parlay into being back up here? I don't. I, I think. I think zero percent. I think zero. I, I think zero percent at the beginning, and and then ten percent, ten percent all the way through, just like me. I I, 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 th- I, th- I don't know. I, 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 I was like, I, 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 I like. That. I'm not. I'm not. I don't mean that to disparage her in any way. I was like, but like, is there is there a part of her like like, like does she love being up here so much that like like she engages with you? 
for I that. Think, you know, let's let that let's let's let let's let's not be addicted to dichotomy. I mean, what are we learning with this election? Like, oh, like, like if we if we if we follow the path of good person bad person long enough, we're gonna end up in a fucking desert where we're gonna lose our fucking minds because, like, like the truth is, like, we're all just different kinds of people, and like, 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 like I I just like like you know, is she is she. Is she a good neighbor? Is she a bad neighbor? Am I a bad neighbor? Am I a bad person? Like, should I let more light into my life? Should I read her screenplay? Is she an attention whore? Is a, is a, is or is fame bad? Is it is is everything? It's like these questions. Like 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 I my 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 epiphany lately in in in, in therapy and just in thinking about it and, and driving to work with Spencer every day is just like dichotomy is like a crutch. Like dichotomy is laziness is ideological laziness like we've talked about this like like the idea that it's things are one thing or the other is kind of like it's it's an addiction and it's a comfort zone and it's like I don't, who know you know yeah. like, like I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's binary that she is all one or all the other but like, no, like, no I'm not yeah. trying to high road you also I, that sounds like <laughs> I, I, I'd sound like I'm a little high flown saying that in answer to your thing but but I also just like I'm like yeah look, look I I don't know she's my neighbor Beth like she like she's like a character I don't know yeah. you know Joey let's check check back in with you did you, did you, get, did you get your tarot cards <laughs> did, uh, Joey did, 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 yes. oh shit what card is that? Because Joey, to his credit, has sat there in graveyard silence the entire time and just totally digging it. I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> oh, shit. I love you, Joey. So this is for you. Uh, you are the oh, king of shit. cups. I don't know the individual's name, but if anyone could find out who was the first person to use ether to anesthetize therapeutically, that is who his past life was. Isn't Dan the king Sweet. of cups? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm in the Knight of Cups. Oh, <laughs> that's like my favorite Bugs Bunny routine there, too. So the ether one. So. No, wait, wait, you're saying that he is the that he's the reincarnation of the person that first used ether to anesthetize. That's right. Really? Didn't that guy no, cut how, does his that, leg how, how does that come to you? Is that, is that some sort of d uh, divinic thing that happens? Let's see. Oh, oh, we have we have a Google search. Perfect. God, our fans are awesome. Okay. They would never steal a sign. So. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. You know, but. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't mean to kiss your ass, but you did notice in that text conversation I was, I was kind of sticking up for you guys. <laughs> Human teeth and chloroform. Yes. Human. <laughs> Human teeth and chloroform. It says that William Thomas Green Morton, who lived from August 9th, 1819, to July 15th, 1868 was an American dentist who first publicly demonstrated the use of inhaled ether as a surgical anesthetic. How'd he die? 1846. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, he he died on an ether bench. <laughs> <laughs> I think he went on ether and cut his leg open and bled to death. Oh, really? That's why that, I asked. That, Maybe that, that's chloroform. That, that's my favorite scene in uh, Fear and Loathing in the book uh, by Hunter S. Thompson where the, he just pours ether on the floorboard of his car and the convertible so he just wafts up as they're <laughs> driving and he goes into Circus Circus and loses his fucking shit. <laughs> That's All right. how you do it. Well, sorry, so but ba back diving it's into... Uh, uh, it's, <laughs> uh, it's the most wonderful time of the day when the planes are all falling and buildings are... <laughs> Don't fucking do that. You you cheer for 9-11 every week. Uh, when... You when that song on paper, I've only I'm only familiar with the movie, uh, but uh, that so the lyrics to that song on paper make me think that that is the story of somebody who is realizing that the dichotomy of feeling versus not feeling is a flawed dichotomy, and that she is escaping it and realizing that she can cry in the end, like. What makes her cry is the fact that she is numb. What makes her cry is her alienation. Um, it may, it, it's like, and, and, and that is not foreign to me. And I felt like you were kind of like. Yeah, that song is the, the idea that, like, don't tell me to lie. Like, don't tell me that I know what it, I, I'm, I'm an ice cream cone. Like, 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 if you make me pretend to be an ice cream cone, I feel nothing. And then when he died, she feels nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but also she feels nothing so passionately that maybe we need new language for feeling versus not feeling and that you don't you know you know you want to rely on a, oh you either know what an ice cream cone feels like or you or you're or you're not empathic. I mean, you know, just Are we talking about my girl? What is this? Like, uh, a my, chorus line. 
Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. mm. uh, on stage, uh, I was with Greg Proops on stage last night, and I said a line in a, like, in a dumb game, and I said, uh, who am I anyway? Am I my resume? And Greg said, am I a picture of a person I don't know? And there's one girl in the balcony who's like, wow! <laughs> <laughs> because she was probably just in a chorus line or loves that movie but like those, those songs are really dark and really great so have you Drew felt throughout your life uh, intellectually rattling and emotionally numb is that does that lead to insomnia does that lead to uh, a connection with uh, people who are as you say uh, joining you across the deep dark like are you, look, look, talk talk about your your relationship with the universe do you think people are bad do you think do you, do you hate everybody do you not like do you look at them as like uh, I won't give you options you just go but yeah, I think it's like 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 uh, my interest in doing the podcast came out of this like miserable thing like when I couldn't sleep and I'd be thinking about going to school and like I went to Catholic school and like me and the nuns did not get along. Like they just <laughs> fucking hated me. And like I had, I think I had like undiagnosed dyslexia or something. And they were like, oh no, you're just lazy. Like they're like, you, you have the ability to do the work, but you choose not to. So then I like internalize that, whatever. It's like, okay, so it's you versus me. Like, all right. So now I know the kind of deal, like a little bit of a dichotomy. Cause I was like a kid, like, like these authority figures are out to get me and I'm this kid. And I think that just led to me trying to figure stuff out at night. Like, I'd be lying there thinking, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? Like, and I think I still do that. It's like, well, am I going to be a good guest when I go on harm time? Was it, was it, was it, what am I going to do? Like, and there's like, oh, let me read some more about Dan. What's it, what, it, it, but, uh, like, th there's a part of, like, there's a, another thing that's like, oh, whoa, man, calm down. Like, it, and I don't have, like, total access to that whenever, except when I do the podcast, but it's like, Oh yeah, those nuns like like some super mellow part. Like, dude, you're pretty, I mean, you might I might have to recruit you as like my like sit on my shoulder or something. <laughs> like to be like, oh, you know what? Like yeah. and I think it's like the truth like in the song too is like that she's like like in this put in this situation, like she gets into this performing arts school and it's like, Oh, this is it, this is I'm gonna make it now. Like uh and this is like this teacher, Mr. Carp, who's a dick, spoiler. And uh <laughs> He teaches the improv class or whatever where she's supposed to feel all this stuff. I'm going to make it now, not to interject, but because the idea of getting accepted to a school, that comes from a place of, oh, well, these people need to be pleased. And once they're pleased, you're fucking set. You're going to Hogwarts, you're going to be a wizard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, but then, no, you, so anyways. Yeah, like, and I don't know, like, like, I was also trying to get inside your head. Like, I was like, oh, man, like, like, once I started reading about how you think about story and stuff, I don't know, those things just feel like puzzles a little bit or something, like, like and it just draws me in, like, stuff that's like, okay, this isn't just about an entertaining story. Like, just, like, not being able to sleep or, or like, that scientists don't understand sleep. It's, like, just like Rick and Morty. Like, there's way more there than you see on the first one or two watch flus. It's, like... There's something going on below the surface, and that's what people connect to. And like in this song, what I connected to is like, she's like, "Shit, I don't care that he died. Like, I, I right. feel I, I, I'm in full acceptance that I feel nothing. I, I don't know. Oh, but like, you, that, that, but that the day that you say, I don't care that this person died, yeah. <laughs> well, Mr. Like, Mr. that is an that can be an incredibly fucking. Uh, but Mr. Carp, like that, that the teacher in that is is t telling all these students, pretend that you're uh, you're cold, and pretend that you're hot, and pretend that you're this. And everyone else is doing it, and she thinks they're all lying. She, she, she's like, she's like, I, I think it's all bullshit. And she, when, the, when this guy that she, was a professional bullshit artist dies, like, it doesn't mean anything to her. Like, like, like she, like her identity had nothing to do with these weird tasks that she was asked to do. Yeah, I took it as like empowering too. Like she, she didn't do this, but like that she slammed the coffin, and she's like, now I'm an actor. Carp, fuck off! Like, well, there's, all, there, I mean, if you think that the job of acting is the is is a psychotic job, whether it's an audience or cameras that are staring at you, you have to be equally conscious of the fact that you are faking something as you are, because if you really believed you were an ice cream cone, you'd turn your back to the audience for the entire show. You 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 wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't hit your marks. You wouldn't remember your ice cream lines. Um, 
You, 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 there's all kinds of reasons why you also simultaneously, in order to be ooh, so immersed in all this stuff, you also have to be so hyper conscious of like where your head is, or, 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 or even more so with the with the cameras instead of the audience. But the but the, the that that's the interesting thing I think about that the lyrics of that song is that it, it seems like it's a writer exploring actually just kind of just two different acting schools and how they kind of crisscross their dichotomies like can bisect each other to the point where you go oh yeah okay so you have to pick one that you're happy with because hers turns out to be you know what i'm the person that's that, that's capable of forgetting what the fuck anybody <laughs> thinks um and that could lead to really good acting because my calluses my barrier that i i have around myself whether i like it or not like will allow me to plow through a terrible showing of uh, of speed the plow. Uh, like 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 it, 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 even though there's three people in the audience and like a person from I, I, I don't know why I'm going into her biography of like, like weird timeline, but I'm just saying like there's different kinds of good actors and she she's confident at the time of singing that song and, and what a, oh, now, Drew like, Drew do you do you have, you said you had trouble sleeping yourself right you, you have anxiety and that keeps you up yeah yeah does does you doing this podcast kind of busy up your day and occupy a part of your mind that, that allows you to rest or, or do you still go to sleep with the same trouble that you're trying to assuage in other people i think it makes me more aware and i think like the thing about the podcast is like oh that i'm not the only person like suffering from that like like so i mean that's like the main message i want to get in the po- like across in the podcast is like okay i'm not going to come to your house and and, and read you a story, or to steal like, your tarp, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and wrap myself in the tarp, and <laughs> but but like that, like like not being able to sleep sucks, and like since I can relate to that, like I may not understand what other people are going through that can't sleep, but like but, but that, you, you've had people say to you that this really helps, yeah, that, that must feel great. I'm dead inside, though, so it's kind of... T- <laughs> oh, you feel nothing. <laughs> you feel nothing. But it's almost like if you look at your your emotional connection to them as, like, water, then this would be, like, infusing it with, like, a fruit a fruit flavor. Oh, yeah, like fruit-flavored oh, water? Are like, you talking, yeah, like a... Like, with a little fruit in there? It's almost like a... Uh, <laughs> it, it sounds like you're talking sounds about... Sounds like a dream. It, it sounds like you're talking about hint water. Oh. Oh, shit, that's something I have experience with personally. <laughs> I had the apple flavored one. You did? Oh yeah, no, it was great. Spencer, tell me about your personal experience with hand water apple flavor. I had the apple flavored one. <laughs> no, seriously, it was great. I had it. They sent it to us. It tasted like apples. Oh boy, I had it. I had a watermelon one. Tastes like watermelons. Real fruit flavor, not this, you know, fake preservative unnatural flavor stuff. It's Real not like fruit water flavor. that's had like some syrupy goo added to it. It's no, it tastes like... It, that's actually the cool part. And this is, this is a real advertisement because I'm trying to convince you guys of something. But it actually is cool that it's like a fruit-flavored beverage that's not... It's not overbearing in any way. It is exactly as refreshing as water, but just has the... the, the <laughs> A lot of fruit. Wasn't it? Uh, uh, Sp- Sp- I, I, Spencer, well, I, Spencer, I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to come off like I'm reading the highlighted portions of this <laughs> piece of paper that I have here. But Spencer, it sounds like you just ad-libbed the intro with the personalized story uh, that will resonate with our audience. And I will add to that. <laughs> well, <we're... laughs> I'd agree. <laughs> when I my when I tasted the hint water, I I. I had, I had got the distinct impression that it was invented by a woman that that that, that had just had her fourth child. You're talking about Kara Gold. Kara Gold. Yeah, You're yeah, talking about Kara Gold. And not because I'm reading this off of the paper. No, I, because I, she's I, the hint water I'm person. I'm personally invested in her story. Not yeah. because they are. No, we all did. Everything you have to say, and then it said the the following points, and it includes her entire biography of having four children, and then um, she got sick of diet soda because it didn't have that crisp, refreshing water taste I was telling you about in that great intro. She was bored. She was bored with the liquids in her life. Water is boring, Dan. Water is boring. But what what are my options? Hand water. That's the whole point of what we're doing. Eat that mic. Hint water. Wait, <laughs> Jeff, you're not on mic. You're off. Where can it's I get hint water? Where can I get some of this oh, water? Shit. Where can you get it? Okay. Well, it's funny you should ask Joey, uh, the reincarnation the of Joseph Smith. 
Uh, you can get a single variety pack shipped directly to your door, including three bottles of each of Hint Water's four most popular flavors. G- Want to guess what the four most popular flavors are? Pregnancy, Diet Coke, uh, 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 Escape from... No. Uh, apple, Apple... Apples, one crisp apple. Watermelon. Watermelon. Oh, watermelon's Pineapple good. and blackberry. Normally $24, only $15. If you go to drink.com slash Harmontown. I'm done with that. Drink.com. No, no. Drink hint. Drink H-I-N-T dot com slash Harmontown. Drink hint dot com yes. slash Harmontown. Harmontown. Slash. No. Gay male ball worship. <laughs> Kick Gay a code. Secret ball. code. <laughs> Secret. That'll get you an extra watermelon <laughs> thrown in. But it's uh it's uh It's gay it's, in the front, it's business in the back. It's <laughs> if you're bored with water. Um, I mean who isn't? And everybody and, and, water. You know, very I mean, soon. Yeah, we get it. You've got two hydrogens and one oxygen or whatever. It's like yawn. Where's the fruit? Where's the fruit, water? Exactly. <laughs> Scientists argue that that, that we will not be bored with water within 10 years that it will be a very exciting commodity. Uh, yeah. We'll be happy to see it when we see it. But until then, bide your Scientists time. Scientists are working right now to find other planets that not only have liquid water, but have liquid water infused with, flavor. with fruit. <laughs> infused with fruit. Because right. we found... We, we, there's so many planets right now that probably are in the Goldilocks zone where there right. would be liquid water. But we think because we live in such an infinite galaxy and universe we can hold that out. some of them are going to be and going to be blackberry flavored. <laughs> and they have, they have actually found a lot of planets with uh, flavored water, but they all contain preservatives or sugar. Yeah. So <laughs> it's and, like worthless. And calories? The calories yeah, is what's crazy. Is what it gets you. What's the point? <laughs> yeah. But until we have the ability to travel to these distant watermelon and pineapple flavored planets, right? You can uh, just go to he- drink H I N T. They deliver to your house. They fucking bring you know it. how heavy water is. You don't have to carry it. <laughs> all right, yeah. I think that's all the points. I actually, I actually heard they found a planet where it, what it did have no sugar and, and all that stuff, but also then the, they passed it by because it it didn't offer the. Discount. Oh yeah, <laughs> that you get when you yeah because no, it was more you know, than twenty four dollars. No, that planet ch- still charged twenty four dollars. Twenty four dollars, which is not a bad price for yeah, like you good water. Yeah. You go to drinkhint dot com if Harmontown, you're, you're 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 saving. You're nine you're an dollars. astronaut uh, yeah. financially. No, you're 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 the you're the Neil Armstrong of of water excitement. <laughs> Water's boring. <laughs> not anymore. Hint water. I like. I like that hint water, hint, hint water, hint water, hint water is just putting a fucking straight up hit on water. <laughs> They're trying to take down big, big water, which is really biting the hand that feeds you <laughs> when you're hint water. I mean, yeah. If I you mean, look at the ingredients, yeah, I mean, hint a, water. A, a, a watermelon genetically is ninety nine percent water, yeah. and you don't hear watermelons going fuck this fucking water. It's <laughs> who you are. We're water. We are water. Yeah. We biologically, we lunged ourselves onto the shore. We, our, our, our plasma is really identical to, uh, to seawater. Watermelon. It's like a scuba tank that we brought with us. We think, uh, oh, you get stabbed in a Halloween movie and there's blood coming out. Like, oh, that's gross. It's just seawater. Joey. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a oxygen, it's could, like a scuba tank. Could you pick a tarot card for what you think the uh, reincarnation of Hintwater, or who, who, re, who Hintwater is the reincarnation of? Well, uh, Kara Goldman's past life, is that? Kara Goldman, yes. Okay. okay. Wow. Uh, Golden. 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 There we go. With yes. an eye. Let's see. Golding, Golding. Yes. Oh, shit. Golding, 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 Golding. Please don't make I just, me drink I, more I, water. I, I, I felt like the whole time we went, that Joey's been up here that an awesome rendition of Jesus Christ Superstar was just about to break. <laughs> Are you a fan of musicals, uh, Drew? Joey. Well, oh, Drew, I'm oh, sorry. Well, I, 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 I mean, that one just hit home, like, because I was actually in in a car with somebody listening to that song, and I'm like, "Oh shit, I feel nothing." Like, and I was like, "Oh man!" Like, so, so it kind of cut deep, I guess. So if I said I love you, I'd say, "Oh man, I'm hungry." Like, uh, 
That's good. No, it makes Drew, me love Drew, you more. You, you, you semi jokingly said that you're 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 dead inside. That you have a a, a, a numbness to you. Uh, I mean, is that true, or is that just you kind of comedically deflecting stuff? I would say it, it's an issue I have probably. Like, uh, it's because you have a history of not. Uh, you, you, what you've noticed while you're taking data is that the responses that you're capable of giving are are get, being received by other people. You're getting you're getting return data from them that's saying that response was less than, different than, more than I expected. And you are keeping score for yourself, and you're going like, "Yeah, I'm not that good at this people thing." Yeah, I mean, I think like with the. Not to go back to the Halloween side, but it's like, oh, is there a way Dan's supposed to uh, reply to that first text? Like, it, 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 and, and it's like, and then you're like, oh, well, should I? I mean, I'm glad you just be yourself. Like, yeah, I just fucking went to just <laughs> locked horns with her like a fucking ram, <laughs> and then she's like twisting a like, I'm like, oh shit, who's gonna win? Like, uh, but but yeah, I I, I just I well I just. Like, it's this idea of dead inside. Like, I don't know, when we had Steve Silberman on, who, like, we wrote this amazing book uh, called Neurotribes, which is about neurodiversity. It doesn't have to do with, like, oh, you have Asperger's. You are autistic. You are in the spec. Like, like, it's just, like, 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 can we embrace this concept of neurodiversity where there's, it, it, it's, like, it, now that the Internet's here and we're a more text-based society, what we're, I think we're coming into a realization that oh a lot of humanity doesn't necessarily have this like total average facility this almost artificial construct of normality when you run into somebody in public and you oh you're learning their names and you're like people trouble with names and faces and nervous and i don't know like i i i just like I, I, it, 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 like, like this idea. I feel like the idea of being dead inside, the idea that oh, this person doesn't doesn't have empathy and all that stuff. Like it's, it's like it's archaic language. Like it's, it, it kind of it's pro, it's problematic, as the kids would say. Like because it's, it, it, it takes you into a zone of you're either Shatner or you're or you're uh, Leonard Nimoy. Like you're, you're. I don't know why I use the actors' names. <laughs> You're either Kirk or you're Spock. Like you're, you're either like, ooh, I'm gonna fly in through the windows and fuck a green lady, and like, like, like that's how I saw I saved the universe with my dick because I love feeling. Um, and then, and then, or you're either that or you're Spock, and like I don't understand. And it's like uh, the the whole like nerd face thing of like, ah, oh, Spock, you have feelings and stuff. It's like. Come on, what, what 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 is a feeling? What does that even mean? Like like you at the end of your podcast, you sit and thank a thousand people, people, anybody who tweets you, you like people, like people are messaging you and going, oh my band's playing, and like you 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 sit there and like go go like oh you go go see this guy's band and like all this shit. You're pathetic. <laughs> you're a sappy sop. It's a good thing I'm dead inside. You're it doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> you're dripping in feelings, like just uh, like just from a different angle. You just have to get the gl- like you're because it's a con- it's a it's a responsibility to other people. I'm drunk. Yeah, I, get, wait, wait, I, get no, drunk. I mean, I think what you're like I get like drunk at this point. Wait, the the thing about the internet is like that it gets all this like you're saying with the neurodiversity. It's like oh wait, like I'm not the only freak out there. Like I guess I would classify myself as a spaz if we we're in the. Uh, uh, Ferris Bueller spectrum of uh, like di- social disorders, but like then you realize like like I started the podcast and I was like, huh, I wonder if there's anybody out there that wants some weird ass bedtime stories, and then I was like, oh wait, there are, and, th- and then it was like then they then they started telling people, and it's like, I-, I guess what you're saying is like, I can hear that because it's like, oh yeah, like who gives a shit how like like I can't respond perfectly to everything like. Yeah, just because that's not just because if somebody came over for a cup of sugar, you wouldn't like say the right thing as the right cue. It doesn't mean you're. It's like no, I'm fucking busy with my other thing that I connect with people through a different channel. Like that's what a painter is, or a furniture maker, or a, what do they call the guys that bring the mail? A mail bringer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, are, I think those, those postal workers. There's an expression going postal. It means to to give your your feelings a different outlet. <laughs> Yeah, but like with the dichotomy thing, like if you only can fit into these two boxes, I think that's like half the reason why everybody feels so alone. I mean, other than the shit you think about when you're lying in bed, like, oh, God. Yeah. Uh, but, but like then if you're like, oh, wait, like 
yeah, there's a ton of other people that fit into this box with me, or, or the box doesn't have walls or whatever. But then when you're like, oh, do you like the guy with the bad hair? Like, are you for America or are you against America? It's like, what the fuck? Like, I like the idea that he would... It's like, I, I find myself alternatingly like, 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 equally offended the idea that, that, that he represents bad people and shit. Because like, 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 it's like, fuck you. He's a shitty bad person. Like, he's bad at being shitty. Like, I get, I get mad. I'm like, he's a bad Nazi. He's a bad fascist. Like, like, like Hitler would have done way better by, the, by, by now. Like, 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 it's like, he doesn't even know what he's doing. Like, he can't even do it right. Like, you're bad Hitler. I want to, like, tweet at him. You're bad Hitler. Wrong. You're a bad Hitler. Wrong. Yeah, well, Hitler... Such a nasty man. Such <laughs> a nasty man. <laughs> nasty man. Such a nasty man. Uh, and, but but the, it, it's funny, like, the, the dichotomy thing, though. Also. I would have been a great Hitler. I would have been great. <laughs> I have so many people right oh my God. now. Right now, if you, if you go yes. on the, all the... I would have built a wall out I of Jews. best Hitler. <laughs> I've killed more Jews. I'm killing more Jews. The Slavs would have paid for all it. All of the Nazis say I'm the best. They say I'm a better Nazi than a Nazi. Yes. Um, I yes. have all of the... Uh, you're going to do a great, great... Stalingrad would have fallen so fast. Your head would have spun. <laughs> it's going to be it's a, true. It's a true. Believe third it's true. and a half Reich. Uh, it's gonna be I would have had so many Reichs, there would have been, been a million Reichs. <laughs> Each Reich would have lasted for 10 million years. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to invade China. They, they, they have a great wall. Um, but the, it's funny how sometimes dichotomy, you can't just count it either. It's not as easy as saying, oh, di- it's like gluten. So oh, let's do away with dichotomy. <laughs> We use it all the time to get to the bottom of shit. It's like, well, look, let's step back from this and look at one of two paths here. Either we're going to do this or we're going to do that. And it's such a healthy thing to do most uh, half of the time, probably half of the time. And then, and then the, uh, probably half the time, probably most of the time, probably the best times. Um, you're either building a wall or you're not building a wall. But, but, but the, the other half of the time, it's like I was sitting there, like I was watching Cody like crumble to the floor during the debates and scream when he said nasty woman, like, like when he, all of the things, it's like, it's like nails on a chalkboard. Then I'm noticing myself going like, uh, baby, he's not going to win. And then she goes like, I know. And then I'm thinking like, oh, well, why are you fucking being dramatic then? And then, like, and, and then later on, she's like upset again. And then I go like, I thought you said you knew he wasn't going to win. And she's like, I just said that because you made me feel stupid earlier. I'm like, I wasn't trying to make you feel stupid. I was trying to make you feel safe. I don't know that he's not going to win. I'm just being a, a man. I'm just being a man. I, I was like, and it was a crazy meta thing. Like I was being a man. I was trying to like pat her on the back during the debates and tell her the orange man's not gonna win <laughs> like that's my job as a man during debates <laughs> and it's like it was like so you then you go outward on that Fibonacci curve and you go like well okay so like somewhere along it's, it's just like, like well when he's not gonna win and, and and he can't win and 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 that doesn't but and but here's the what, 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 what do you want? A five-party system? You got it. <laughs> you probably stay pretty apolitical. Also, well, what do you do about tonality? That's what I was going to yeah, ask you. Yeah, that's tough. Because you, you, you had to put a warning on your episode. Uh, that you was said, a hairpin you, turn, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a hairpin turn next to the La Brea tar pit, which is a very, everyone, very, <laughs> everyone very values it bigly. Um, the, 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 but you, you had to put a little swear words warning on your episode of mine. Uh, what, how do you, how do you freely like just be yourself? And then like, what, where do you stand in terms of, why aren't you just saying shit and fucking. Yeah. It, it, it's just like, t- like it, it's tough. Like not being able like, it's like, okay, try to avoid talking about the election all. Cause people are going to go ape shit. Like it, like, I guess it's like keeping in mind somebody's lying in bed and like sometimes it's going to be like a grandmotherly like woman, and like I always that's why I like take so much time to kind of explain that the podcast is kind of weird because I always like think of this like this little old lady putting on like her shawl and putting on <laughs> oh she told me to listen to the podcast and then it's like what the hell is he talking about like why does he love abortion so much yeah. yeah. I'm trying to get some sleep do you, over Do you here. do a little like uh, proviso at the beginning? Like you do ex- like do an explainer at the top of each, each episode or do you kind of just get right into business? 
it's kind of like there's like this 12 minute intro at least where it's almost like its own show where I just like ramble on and on like okay this is the podcast put you to sleep it's like uh I was, like I was thinking about water the other day and 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 I was drinking a wa- oh wait sorry I'm in the middle of a podcast intro and then but so I'll do is it, isn't water t- t- too boring for most Not, I mean it, I was wishing I had like apple flavored water <laughs> and well, I, I was got, wondering can, I, can, who we, can we lower that? the lights for a minute and just have you just like like yeah. relax and have you just treat us to the cadence that you usually use I just want to give people a taste. Also, everybody take your shirts off. <laughs> Do we, we don't, it's too late to ask for any like wind chimes back there or anything. You don't usually you don't use anything like that. Give me like 30 seconds. 30 seconds for wind chimes? Yeah. You right. got 29. <laughs> 28. <laughs> well, this like, 27. It brings up a good thing like with wind chimes. It's like when you go to a wind chime store, do you you think about like well, just, what's just, your favorite? It was a bamboo wind chime. What's your favorite wind chime note? store in town? I, I like wind chimes, wind chimes, wind chimes. But <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. And then it's like, do you want them big or small? Or the ones that are like a xylophone? Because then it's like, well, then when that person comes home, they're going to rant, run their hands across the stupid xylophone. And it's going to drive me nuts. So maybe I'll just get the bam. I, but I, I hate those bamboo wind chimes. And like, like I try to lie there and, and think about... Yeah, the wind chimes I used to hear when I was on that dock that one time, like lying there on that dock. The dock was bouncing up and down, and I was staring at the clouds, and I was just, I was like, man, like uh, those wind chimes are going to wake my dad up. He's going to go ape shit. So I got off the dock and walked up to the house, and I was walking up the dock. And I stopped at the dock, and then I, I looked in the water. There was a fish there. Kill, kill, kill. And I was looking at the fish. <laughs> yeah, and I remember that time that guy was down there at the bottom, way down, all the way down. And then I was thinking, like, how did he get on that spaceship that one time? Like, because I was watching that one where he was on the spaceship, and his mask was different. <laughs> and, like... I was, I was like, man, like, how do you get a new mask? Like, is that like, was that some kind of interstellar shit? Like, and then, oh yeah, because interstellar, like, what if, uh, what if he got sucked into a black hole, and then, uh, and then he like, and then my dad dropped his beer on the dock, and, and I said, oh shit, uh, better be quiet and not talk over these wind chimes. Hurry back. But I, I, I was like, uh, I was thinking about like uh, that guy. What's his name? His name, like, so this would be the podcast. I couldn't say Freddy one or uh, Jason. But I said Voorhees. Like, like, do, do, have I known any Voorhees before? Because Voorhees is a good Voorhees. 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 Like Voorhees. Voorhees. And I, 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 I was get, I started hearing things. And then I started, I started, I started, I started feeling angry. I, I, like it was the wind chimes, and they kept, they kept going, ringing over and over. I'm never going to sleep and again. Then, I, <laughs> what's the end? This is a nightmare. <laughs> I never get to kill people. Uh, yeah, I mean, he usually works in a morning. I you know, just picture a lot of a lot of grandmothers just oh, wide awake. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is the end. But is there a is there a guiding principle that keeps you from as you said when you picture that old woman with the shawl, which 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 which, which let's use her as a symbol of like that's a reason to not get political. That's a reason to not use profanity. Um, how is that? What what compass do you? Is there like a guiding principle that keeps you clear of all of that? No, and, and like I find like using prof- like I guess I struggle with that because it's like I think some people when you swear it makes them feel more connected like mm-hmm. uh, like this vanillaizing of everything like actually I think excludes people or, or ma- giving everything normalcy. It's like oh my podcast is not normal. Like it's not like like right. so it's like I, I struggle with like. Oh, people are like, I can't believe you swore. I'm never mm-hmm. listening again. And then I feel ashamed or whatever. But then I'm like, well, like, I think there's four, probably 4,000 people that feel like 
oh, finally someone's swearing on a sleep podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you, so in your, in your day-to-day life, the person that you are, if I'm hanging out with you, uh, and, and or how often are you saying the word fuck, shit, and whatnot? Because I'm saying it every other word. I mean... I mean Probably pretty often, like. I and mean, so I, that, that's the confusing thing to me is that you're being yourself. Like you're 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 going to the you're going down the mine that that I'm going down, but you're somehow. But you're kind of putting on Drew more of like a like not not a character, but you're going into a certain mode where you're like you like if if you had to put on the hat, Dan, of let's make everybody feel relaxed, you mm-hmm. wouldn't you know you wouldn't. Do you, be... do you have kids? I have one kid, yeah. And so is it possible that maybe you're accessing that lobe where you're like, she's listening? Or is it your daughter? I think it's like, part of it is like, my internal critic is so loud and powerful. And like, so even when I sit down to record the show, like there's that that narrative track going, like, don't fuck this up. Like, yeah. so, like, like, so it's like, I try to like, just get to this. It's it. Unfortunately, the podcast doesn't tra- tra- like translate to my regular life, where I can be like, "Oh man, go ahead and cut me off." Like, <laughs> like, but, but like, so like to counteract my critic, it's like, I just, it's the same part that people fall asleep to. I think because their critic or that aggressive part of themselves is what's poking at them. Like as soon as you get in bed, it's like, "Why didn't you get this done today? Why, 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 why did you piss your pants?" Like, like, you know, and it's like, <laughs> and the, and then you're like, like, like the person starts to like buy into that story and they they just start listening to that story so it's like I'm there and I'm like well here's another story you can listen to it doesn't really make a lot of sense it doesn't really go anywhere and I think like at the same time I'm like trying to I'm like listen dude we're just making a podcast put people to sleep here like this isn't like a fourth draft or something right, like right. Calm, but when I asked you earlier down. when I said earlier that that must make you feel good that, that you help people deal with their insomnia or go to sleep and you said no I feel nothing but like do, do you feel like this is a benevolent thing you're doing or is that not, not why you're doing it is this more just you getting something off of your chest or do you how important is it that you might be helping other strangers out I mean it could be impa- um, unpacked by like psychologists like I think part of it is like really narcissistic like that when I was a kid I couldn't sleep and I lied there in bed miserable and I didn't feel like I was like all right you're on your own to deal with this and I can't go back in time to fix that you know so I think like if like a cold ass psychiatrist would be like oh well that's just what you're trying to do just trying to go back but I guess like it is cool like if I hear from somebody like that has like PTSD like from some something that happened I guess I do feel stuff sometimes like it's like holy shit like this silly thing I'm doing can help distract you from something that's horrific, or or people. Does that warm you up a little bit? Like, where, how how do you, how do you absorb that that compliment, or do you just stick it in a drawer somewhere and think deal deal with it later? Yeah, I guess I try to put it in like this basket of like, okay, this this is this is, is this real? Like, am am I really helping people? I like would just put it in a bin that's like, okay, so that's like a firewood pile like called I Won't Get Kicked Out of Society uh, for that <laughs> amount of time. Like yeah. every, every time someone writes and says like, ah, you helped because uh, this feely, feely thing. And then I go like, oh, good. So you'll have my back when they're about to throw me off yeah. a cliff. <laughs> it, it is really weird. Like, like, all, all, like from Harmontown and from like, like doing other comedy shows, like Who's Line, uh, like people walk up and they say, hey, like it, it's really common, like strangely common that people come up and say, like, you helped me through a really hard time. Like, I was sick, or I was in hospital, or my mother was going through a thing. Like, and people have these, like, these really intense connections to the stupid thing that we're, like, I mean, not that this is stupid, but it is stupid. Like, we're just, we're, it's, it's irresponsible, and we don't think about it. We just show up half drunk and do this thing. But, uh, but people, like, have these weird connections to it. And when they say, you really helped me through some major shit. And my, your instinct is to go, ah, oh, you, you, you got to get out more. Like, and deflect that. But, but really, that's, like, that, that's a major thing to unload. But it's also, it also doesn't, you, you can't like, translate it into anything that starts with your value. Like, I always, I've come to look at it like if you were in a pool and people are just grabbing you. And that's a bad example because someone's going to drown. But, but <laughs> like if you're in the dark or everyone's on ecstasy, or it's a confusing party or you're in a hay maze or something, like somebody, somebody grabbing you and saying, 
I'm so glad you're here. I, I, I'm so glad I ran into you. Uh, uh, I remember you from before by the entrance to the hay maze. Uh, um, and, and I was with my girlfriend. I don't know if you remember her, but I lost her. And like, I just seeing you like reminds me, but I, I, you kind of like, you, you were like, Oh, so we are catchers in the rye. <laughs> I didn't read the book. I, they tried to make us. <laughs> Uh, I, I just I, I got a hundred on the test and it just like click uh, alienation yeah got it but 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 I I think it's something about that like it's like 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 you're you're you're, you're running into each other and people are expressing that like it's not it's not oh you're you did something good like your snake oil is better than other snake oil it's like oh when you put yourself out there when you get onto the dance floor even if you're doing a silly dance even if you're that that that, that sooner or later. You're, you you get to experience the sensation of dancing with other people that that they will if someone will go, yay! I like I like I like you're I'm so glad you're out here because these weddings suck. <laughs> yeah, I mean I think it's like the other thing. I mean it makes me think of two things. One is like also, ah! <laughs> but I, like I uh, PT'd him. But all right, the, I, 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 you, I, you, you, te- I you pre teed him. You pre teed his SD. T- All right. TBT. T- T- we'll figure it out later. But I mean, the other thing is, people don't get credit for being nice. Like, it's like all the people that say thank you for shit. Like, everybody's always heaping on. And I mean, I guess I'm a cynical person too. But it's like, I've been blown away. Like you're saying that people come up to like that. People are thankful. Like it's like, I don't know. When we look at all this election shit and like, oh, how how do you think about it? Well, well, or like it's like. Oh wait, there's tons of people out there, and they might even be people that believe in the crazy, like the other stuff. But it's like that are saying like thank you. Like I don't, I don't know. It, it is definitely like making the show ha- has made me maybe like a softer person, or been like, man, there is some good in the world, despite like uh, like presuming there isn't or whatever. I don't know. When, when you do one, do you do you have that kind of sense of like? What, some sort of sense of accomplishment or, or just or just or is it simply just like oh i did one thing today that was semi or possibly productive and so like i can rest a little easier it's more like i guess if if i have like one out of every 30 episodes or 40 episodes that i like i feel like like damn that came out good even if it's not good like i don't know like once every 40 episodes i'll have one done i'll be like oh like that felt really that was good a like and I don't care. Like I, I can make it another forty episodes. I'm, I'm curious though, because like I I get so I'm so into detail, like oh, like almost to the point of distraction that I, I don't know that I would fall asleep. I think that I was like, where's he going with this? <laughs> or, or, or even if but you're he's not very going clear anywhere, in the I was point like, that I, that's okay. Like and yeah. that's, I think that's part of the interesting thing is that as we said in the beginning, if a doctor tells you to chew on a straw, like you know, the straw chewing is just gonna it sends you into this weird thing and like. He's like, hey, listen. If, <laughs> by the way, if you also, if you find yourself uh, very focused on what I'm saying, you know that's okay too. You're not doing it wrong. Uh, you may fall asleep uh, to something else after. Joey, are you a good sleeper? Are you? Are you a? Oh yes, I. Um, <laughs> I sleep all the time. Uh, <laughs> all the time. That is the best. <laughs> oh my god. Well, I think if, if we can pack both into five minutes each, I would say one thing I would like to try is Joey, could you give us a tarot reading wow. for next week's episode? I guess. Oh, do you do you ever do you ever do you, yeah. do you am I abusing you by asking oh. you to precog? Oh, thank you. Like uh, is I, that? No, I'm sure that the spirits are willing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so good. With, with now, now, spirits. Here's a cynical question, Joey, while you're going through that. Yeah. Um, your positivity, which you seem to exude. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Uh, it, it, it's not an act at all. I, I, now, now I'm being di- di- a dichotomy guy. I mean, like, this is like you're not pushing down some other like rage part of yourself, or are you actually this this groovy like for real? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I'm a I'm a good Mormon boy. Um, that's that's a thing, right? Like I, the like, Mormons I went to high school with were the coolest. Like they were like the, they seemed to be the most well adjusted. <laughs> like they liked their families and shit. And, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. That's that's definitely part of it. Um, and and but no, so, there were a couple weird ones. Uh, yeah. Well, no, definitely there are the weird ones. Uh, <laughs> 
so so being being nice is is uh, a virtue uh but being um someone who likes people is a gift and so if you like people it's easy to be nice yeah there you are but liking people is a skill oh well because because I I, I I like people I like strangers but also I can be really misanthropic like mm. like like the flip of a coin like sure. I can, like like people can be um, like when I'm driving everyone's an enemy and then but then I could be at the airport and just be in a certain mood where I'm very philanthropic and really into everybody yeah but do you go through that too are you are you do you, have you mastered a skill where you can like you're equanimous to just all, all things at all times well cannabis helps. <laughs> <laughs> Cheater. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, that is true. <laughs> so I, All right. I have never been. I, I want you to have a podcast because your voice is soothing as fuck. <laughs> Thank you. No, um, it, we have the pulpit. Uh, it's just a you know something we're doing in Utah. We've had like twenty episodes, and and we're so excited to have Urshine Jane on this oh, Wednesday. Yeah. So we. Uh, uh, we get into all kinds of fun little esoteric things that may inadvertently put people to sleep, but <laughs> we would encourage anybody to just uh, keep a dream journal about what they dream about after they listen to the podcast because we need as many insights as possible because we're trying to predict to the end of the world. Um, <laughs> and, and hence the tarot. And I don't mm. really have a... Um, a, a trained uh use of these cards but um, oh good oh, good okay, uh, yeah that's so, that's the last thing we would have wanted it just gets in the way of the yeah. spirits right. yeah, I know. so just <laughs> let's just let's just let the cards the, the, the fall. education the education will inhibit the genius that's, that's, that's exactly that's, yeah, exactly so we'll let okay. them fall where they may <laughs> Oh, cards shit. are on the floor. Yeah, they just kind of stayed in a pile, so we'll try this. Again. Oh. That indicates. Well, I'll let you. See now, if you hadn't told me, I would have thought you had studied this your whole life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Queen this of Cups. Like a magician. <laughs> So, and you had asked me earlier about the creator of Hint Water, uh, and once again, that's Kara Golden. Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Uh, so, the card, the card that came up uh, is Queen of Cups. So, compliment nice. uh, to your card, and um, Let me get that Hint Water fortune. That's right. Uh, so, you're probably going to mention Hint Water again, is what the cards are saying. That's. That's what I'm getting. Oh, really? Yes, and um, it looks like the past life of Kara Golden is Pamela Goldman Smith, the creator of the tarot deck, because I think I forgot to take this card out of the pile. (laughs) (laughs) Dan, uh, your card is Joker. My card is Hoyle's Rules of Poker. <laughs> anyway, our show has just become, in a good way, it's just become Carson. We're just Carson. Is a, a guy with a lizard coming out next? And, uh, Joan Embry is going to come out? <laughs> or a lady with a lizard. Nice save. You get, you're getting uh, so good at these uh, thank you. afterthoughts. Yeah. These, I call them cap doffers. <laughs> I'm learning now. Our, our, our president's going to be a space lady, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to add, or maybe it's a lady to the end of every expression. I, I, I uh, all right. Well, so then I guess the last thing to do is to try to do, if we can possibly accomplish it, what we do is like a sleep a sleepy rap, and then, but then the bridge is like, and then if we can, is there any way to go from the rap beat to then the and then the wind chime silence, and let and, and, and let and let Drew just d- fill like so. I go so I do a, some rapping, and then and then I and then it goes into wind chimes, and and Drew like talks for a little bit, pr- probably like about what I rapped about, and, and then I, I and then it goes back into me rapping, yep. and so on until 10 p.m. <laughs> 
Can I lie on the floor, please? Uh, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, I, yeah I, think it, I think it would be rude of us to not let you do that. <laughs> I don't know how I expected him to lie on the floor, but it wasn't that. Right? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you were pleasantly surprised, right? right. <laughs> like, like, you didn't know it was going to be that adorable yeah. and take up that little space. Like, he, he, ta- he turned into a little sleepy, like a French children's book <laughs> illustration. All right, so... Oh, man. The crowd's going wild. Yeah. It's a... Oh shit, it's the banner from the Bootsons house! Oh no! Alright. Yo. 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 Zach, lay a beat on us, man. Yo. Sleep, sleepy rap beat, Zach. Yo. Yo. Zach McKeever on the beats back here. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yo. 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 Yo, yo, sleepy time, yo, 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 sleepy time, yo, 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 sleepy time, yo, 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 I got my pillow, yo, 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 I got my, I got my sleepy cap on, I got, hmm. I'm gonna go to sleep now, gonna lay down and I don't know how, I'm gonna first try with my head and my feet, then I'm gonna let my back do the work, shit. Sleepy sheets, sleepy blankets, and it's wear with me. I got a, a sleepy time on the time. You give me a second for the next rhyme. I'm gonna go to sleep. Hold it. Whoa, my name is MC Sleep. Okay. All right. Oh shit! Yeah. It's MC Sleep, y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Shit's about to get drowsy. Thank you. I was just warming up. It's all right. All right. You ready, MC Sleep? Yes, All yes, right. thank you. You all ready for MC Sleep? That was just a warm up. Yeah, I he's just, he's you just warming you up, warming you up, y'all. Yeah, okay, here, here we, we go. go. MC Sleep. Yo. Yeah, yo. Drowsy. Yo. Sleepy. Yo. yo. Drowsy. Yo. Oh. Soporific. Okay, all right. Yo, all right. Yo, 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 yo. Yeah, okay, all right. Yo, okay, here we go, yo. All right. <coughs> yo, no. yo, 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 MC no. Sleep. If you're not no. feeling it, man, we can do it. We can do it. No, 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 no. I'm fucking sleepy. Just give me a second. <laughs> right. you, you seem a little high, yeah, high strung right don't now. Don't fuck with me. I'm the fucking master of sleep. You just, yo, I don't know. I play sleep. So, so I play for right keeps. Okay. Yo, to keep on the beat. Oh, you're gonna give it sheep through the jump over the fence and your mind to keep. I'm gonna shoot your ass when you go to sleep. But because it, your soul helps me sleep, I suck your soul from your body and it makes me sleep. You motherfucker, I count your ass like sheep. All right, all right wait, yo, okay, let me just. Wait, that was warm up too. Do you help us? Do you help us go to sleep, or are you no, trying just, to make just us? Just give nervous? me a second. Give me a fucking time to focus. I'm, I have so I'm, much I'm, shit going on during the day. I need to fucking relax and I'm, rap. I'm just worried about you. MC Sleep. I've never seen you like this. Yeah, well, your worry tends to make me worry. Okay, <laughs> so just let me fucking focus. Head on the pillow, pillow on the bed I fucked your mama so hard she almost lost her head Foot post, head post in the bedroom I went to Halloween, I saw her on a broom She's a witch, not a bitch, she's my lady I fucked your mom cause my name is McGrady I'm Irish My name is John McGrady I'm in the backyard in your window (laughs) What? You never told me you were Irish, <laughs> MC Sleep. Yo, yo, in your backyard. Sorry, give me a second. Why is there a window in my backyard? Know, just take it easy. That wasn't me. I don't know what you're talking about. That wasn't me in your backyard. You're deflecting. You're deflecting. Oh no, I, that's the next day at work, and I'm, uh, I'm denying everything. My name is McGrady. I work in the mail room. I'm not the creepy person at all. I wasn't in your backyard. How dare you accuse me? Yo, okay. Just, okay, come on. All right, just, okay. 
I got a little car, it goes real far. I go toot toot, my name is Jamie Farr. I was on MASH, I played Klinger. When I eat your mama's pussy, the feeling lingers. She comes hard, she comes real slow. She comes next week, and then she grows as a person. My cunnilingus is spiritual. I fucked your mama and I healed you all. I healed you all. That rhy I rhyme spiritual with healed you all. It seems like a forced rhyme, MC Sleep. I don't know. Pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> if I if I had committed to it, it, it would have been amazing. Crudely shoehorned. Yo, I, okay, all right. Yo, yo, uh, yo. Yeah. Shoe, hat, shirt, bat, salt, ketchup. You you're fucked. You're you can't fucked. rhyme ketchup. <laughs> All right, starting over. All right, just give me a second. MC okay. Sleep, y'all. Is MC Sleepy? Right. right. It's going to put go. you all to right. sleep. Yo. Okay. Yo. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. Yo. Well, my name is Sleepy. Sleepy's Jim. I'm going to come into your house after him. I'm, I am sound the same, but I'm a different guy. I'm Sleepy Jim, and I'll tell you why. When he was born, he was a juvenile offender, and I used to hang out with him and play Defender in his parents' basement, and then we were united at the soul, and now I follow him around and try to keep him on a, on a roll, but he, he victimizes people. He stands in their backyards and looks in their windows. And, and it's creeple So I, I try to counsel him I'm sort of like a sponsor in AA If that makes you understand it Fuck, this isn't, this is bad Like, okay Yo, Sleepy Jim All Sleepy right. Jim in the house Fuck, alright, alright MC Sleepy, you back? I'm MC Sleepy and I'm here to say I'd, I'd like to sleep longer than you do today I'd like to get 16 hours if I can I, I, I don't have much work to do So I feel uh, Give me a hand for a Fuck, fuck Alright, fuck it, fuck it Alright, just give me a second Alright MC Sleepy, y'all It's about to get sleepy Left to the right Top to the down Fuck your mama Smile to a frown Made her happy Made her sad I fuck her good I fuck her bad I fuck your dog I fuck your cat I fuck your volleyball With a bat I put all your equipment on hold I fuck your mama Italics Bold Face Helvetica Sans Serif Every font is Karen Kilgariff uh, our previous guest I fuck your mama so hard I'm the best I put, I put my dick on a ship And I send it from the harbor To invade itself I got two dicks And two chips Yo, Fuck, and fuck MC Sleepy Maybe it's not your night tonight MC Sleepy oh, Come on, no, don't What time is it? Sometimes you gotta late. know where to let it go I have so much to do in the morning <laughs> Yo, I love to rap. My name is Sleepy Rapper, and I love to rap. I'm not gonna make it very complicated. I'm not gonna do the things that we hated. I'm just gonna rap. My name is Sleepy Rapper. Fuck! Thank you for coming to Hermantown, everybody. Wait, wait. Uh, no, 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 no. Let no. it go, Sleepy Rapper. No, let MC no. MC Sleepy. No, no. no get you some can't rest. do that. You have, always do that. Have just, some, I, here, have some, no. Here's some melatonin. We're just, I'm just going to, like, I'm just, I'm going to commit to doing my part bad, and then we're going to, and then Drew's going to do his part. Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple of bars. Okay. All right. Yeah, we don't serve breakfast, MC Sleepy. All right. Go back to sleep. Cereal Pillows I like to rap about sleepy willows It doesn't matter if I rap good or bad Cause now Drew's taking over He's what I had for breakfast Like pancakes and blueberries I fucked your mama cause her pussy was hairy But I'm not judging her for that It's not, it's, there's no body shaming that happens here It's, that's not, a, that's not good Sleepy McGrady's driving in his little car Peeping in windows every place But he's gonna come up to your window and say Hey little buddy, hey little buddy Keep on sleeping, he's not peeping He's got his little car and he's driving down the street Driving down the street it just peeping in windows Driving down the car, driving down the car 
And then he says, well, let me turn here. Uh, it's my car. I don't Thank you for coming to Harlem now. Town. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Let's hear it for Joey, the reincarnated Joseph Smith from Provo. Let's hear from your mayor, Dan Harmon, everybody. Drive fast, take chances.